I'm a quitness person. I'd like to welcome you all to another edition of the Curry Hurling Championship, both a review and a preview. And I would be looking forward, obviously, to two semi-finals coming up on this coming Saturday and looking back at four very exciting quarterfinals starting on Friday night and moving along to a game on Saturday and two thrillers on Sunday, one requiring extra time when uh, Bally Haig took down the champions. Uh, that's Kratonius who made their exit last Sunday. Now with me to discuss uh, our hurling is the regular panel. I think you know who they are at this stage, so we'll be brief with that. Um, we have first here on my left, John O'Dowd, freelance uh, reporter, uh, does a lot of work with the Kerrymen and covers a lot of uh, hurling games. Is also quite an accomplished junior footballer. Junior is the word. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, then another junior uh, is <laughs> I, I joined that right now. So uh, <laughs> three juniors. Junior junior There's three juniors at this game. game. <laughs> um, uh, McCarthy, James, of course, with eight senior county championship medals. A uh, Kilmoyley man, uh, ha uh, really to the very to his very core. And, of course, uh, last Sunday, while he wasn't commentating, obviously, on the Kilmiley Causeway game, uh, he followed every blow on the, uh, on the terrace and was seen at one stage instructing management what to do. And he was heard somewhere close to Barry McElligot, they told me. They heard <laughs> James shouting out instructions. James, you're very welcome. He still, by the way, hasn't got an intermediate no. uh, medal. And the final member of our panel is the jovial uh, Aidan Leahy. Uh, he's banking on a Nabadorni uh, County Championship win because I don't, I'm not sure it was his father born when they won it last. I think he was just about, but, just about but he was and certainly 1974. 50 years uh, are growing. He is, uh, well, he's probably only 25. And um, he was looking forward as well to Abidorni on next uh, Saturday evening. Uh, but he enjoyed the games uh, the weekend. He is now, though, to his great disappointment, out of the Intermediate Championship. Gone. Two successive defeats, although last uh, Wednesday he played and uh, they... We did uh, very well because I didn't play. Yeah, 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 yeah obviously it took 15 years because he, yeah. <laughs> he didn't play. <laughs> and uh, they went on and uh, Kilgavin uh, took him out. Uh, so, but having said that, he's here and he'll be ready to give his views on uh, the big games both uh, last weekend and the uh, coming weekend. So that's the scene set, and uh, of course we are very excited now because we're coming to the real jeopardy end of the championship last weekend's game, really a, a, a notch up from the group games, because uh, if you lost last week you were out, the four teams exited, it, and now we'll go forward as well to two great semi-finals. Now we'll start with our look back, and we'll start with uh, Friday night, last Friday night, and the highlights of last Friday night between... Abby Dorney and St. Brendan's. Take a look. Mansell wins the puck out. Mikey Clifford's up with him. There is an Abby Dorney man. Mansell does well. Can he score from about 45, 40 metres? That's great work by... On, uh, on Big Mike O'Leary, so... That's the, that's the change there. And the ball's been poked down on top of Michael O'Leary. Wallace goes up. O'Leary's inside. If he gets it into his grass, could be dangerous. He does. Blocked. Good block there. Looked a certain goal maybe there for Michael. O'Sullivan back to Mikey Clifford. Mikey Clifford in towards David Egan. Great take by Egan. Lays it off to Michael O'Leary. This will be a lovely team score if O'Leary defence are all gone off already. Here's Gary O'Reardon. O'Reardon. Back to Nathan O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll will shoot. O'Driscoll's usually very accurate. And he does it under pressure. Gets it this time in his grasp. Away from Gary O'Reardon. Mansell lays it off. Good pass. Is it towards Callum O'Sullivan? Across now to Jack Sheehan. Jack Sheehan will score. Yo, oh, great save, Darren Delaney. Jack Sheehan could. It's over Michael O'Leary. Oshin Mansell will get there this time. He's ahead of Gary O'Reardon. Oshin lays it off. Chance of a score. Is it Jack Sheehan? This should be a score. Was it Niall O'Mahony? There by Ronan Donovan, the centre back for Abby Dorney. Inspirational. If they could get a score out of this, it would be fantastic. Lovely play, started by Donovan. Oh, Mansell, good control. Can he beat Gary O'Reardon? He does beat Gary O'Reardon this time. This is one of the best battles of the game. Mansell v O'Reardon, lays it back. Chance of a score Daniel. from Daniel O'Leary. And again, it's Daniel O'Leary. 
Maybe there's too many eyes on Michael O'Leary and they're forgetting about the quality that brother Daniel possesses. Two score, Abby Dorney nine points, St. Brendan's eight points. Mark Murphy, that's been young Callum O'Sullivan. Callum O'Sullivan, little pocket rocket figure, good player. What's he going to do? He's going to try one, is he, from 65. He lobs it in towards Michael O'Leary. O'Leary breaks it. Can Mansell get there? No, he can't. Darren Delaney. It's a... O'Leary! Oh, Mansell gets it! Bit of a miss hit! Ball's gone into the back of the net. Oshin Mansell. Terrible mix-up. In the yard for a full back line. Darren Delaney came out. A defender was in the way. It popped up. Oshin Mansell Dan yeah, was Dan awake. Oshin Mansell got it. He didn't even make full proper contact with it. He almost sliced it. He miss hit it. He won't care. I'll tell you uh, the minimum amount of added time that'll be added on. Chris Lawler gets his first puck out and it's won by Ardfert. Lovely pop pass by Yernon Ferris towards Lee Moog O'Connor. Lee Moog's going to go on the straight burst. He has the pace. Oh, lovely pass to O'Halloran. Shoots. Goal! Seamus O'Halloran. Back in the net. Ardfert. And it all came from the youngster Chris Lawler's puck out. Great run, pop pass by Liam O'Connor. Seamus O'Halloran just evaded the clutches of Connor Bohan. Kieran to Michael O'Leary at half forward. O'Leary goes up with the paw. Great take. Lays it off to the brother Daniel. Is this his fourth point? This will be special. From Daniel O'Leary. One brother to the other. Michael O'Leary went up with the big left hand. Laid it off. Lovely pass with the right. Daniel O'Leary, his fourth point from play. Can you imagine being in there? Complete tremendous vision to set up the goal from Shamie O'Halloran. He finds Shawnee Brosnan. Limo, Brosnan, brilliant pass. Limo, O'Halloran's inside. Limo doesn't need him. It's a, it's a wide. Or was it a brilliant? He's surrounded by John Egan. He takes on John Egan. Michael O'Leary's at a difficult angle. Tries to lay it across to Shane Mansell. Good defending again by Gary O'Reardon. It breaks. Chance. Jack. Block. Jack Sheehan gets it again, rebound. Sheehan turns. Oh, it's just gone wide. And far. You take off David Egan or someone. Why are you taking off Daniel O'Leary? I can't understand the tactics at all. Michael O'Leary's out around midfield. Brennan is out there now. Um, and Darren on Darren Deneen, long range. This will be a booming score. Darren Deneen from it. Bohan goes trusty long to Michael O'Leary. Can Michael O'Leary get there? He has it. He does. Lays it back. They really need a score. Is that John Callum O'Sullivan this time? I don't think that's going to be a score either. Mansell's in there though. Mansell, what can he do? This he turns. Be, yeah. Is this the winner? Yes! yes! It's in the back of it! That's it. Mansell. Just when they needed it. He beat Gary O'Reardon. It was actually a shot for a point probably. But it's dropped short. Mansell's in. Mansell's in the back of the net. Oshin Mansell. Has he finally ended it? Oh my God. Almost playing second fiddle. Here's Here Brendan O'Leary. Oh, Brendan didn't go for his own score. Beautiful pass. Not a goal. Can he get a hat-trick, Mansell? Oh, great play, Ernan Ferris. What a brilliant hook by Ernan Ferris. What was he doing back there? But brilliant play by Ernan Ferris. That stopped Oshin Mansell from getting a hat-trick. Yeah, Mansell is crippled. I'd worry about him for next weekend. Here to go. He's down now, injured, uh, feeling his leg. He kept going, but he got the goal that counted. The young keeper comes out uh, with... I hope you enjoyed those. Uh, an exciting contest. Uh, we go to uh, Aidan first as he had uh, an interest, obviously, in Abbey Dorney. Um, tight enough, considering mm. that St. Brendan's had a lot of injuries yes. during the game. Obviously, only after five minutes, they lost uh, Dahi Griffin and uh, Eric Lean only came on to try and rescue the situation in the final minutes. And of course, Renan Mackis, he's gone. So, yeah, they, they, they put it up. She, it was uh, 9 8 at half time, I think. And, um, you know, Michael O'Leary. Um, well marshalled, um, did damage, and then of course Oshin Mansell, his goal, I suppose. So, how was you taking it, Aiden? Yeah, I suppose they got over the line by playing really poorly. Um, but I think just getting over the line in a quarter final was the most important thing. It's just been a, an issue for the club over the last 10 years, really. Uh, Semi finals have been slim pickings, it's our sixth in 19 years. So, um, you know, that, that shows how difficult quarter finals have been for us over the past uh, couple of years. So I think just getting over the line in any way, shape or form really was just going to be taken as all right, let's let's move on now and look ahead to the to the last four. Um they didn't they didn't cover themselves in glory in the first half, very panicky in a way, like Michael Leary's hat trick against Lick Snow was maybe a kind of one of the worst things that could happen because it was just get the ball into him, get the ball into him. You know, there was a slight bit of panic there. So I think they've they've surely realised now that look we need to relax a small bit more, we need to trust the guys out the middle of the pitch. Go back to the way we were playing all throughout the year. Use Michael when the chance is there. You know, one good ball. 
is all he needs. You know, one good ball versus five poor balls. You know what I mean? With one good ball is all he needs. You're going to get lads out in the field that can pick off their scores. Um, so, yeah, and really, I, I think they went on a burst. Maybe they scored three or four points before half time, and that was really crucial because they were, they were down... Um, down two, I think. Down That's two, I think. Yeah, they scored three points definitely in a row before half time. Yeah. And that was actually an important couple of minutes for them. Um, put them in, put themselves yeah, in front. Them the yeah, the and it, it, look, it was it was against the breeze as well. Like, and there was a bit of a breeze. It wasn't too telling. Like, but um, that was I think that was an important period to get in half time ahead, like that. They got over the line. They didn't play well at all. Um, so they've a lot of improvement to do, a lot to work on. Uh, which is, it's a good thing heading into semi final. Um, that they're they're looking at stuff they need to work on, and you know the 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 way they play it really isn't going to be good enough against Billy Hyde. It's not really good enough against anyone. Um, so they they need to they need to relax. They need to trust themselves more. Go back to play to the strengths of everyone around the team, not just the strengths of Michael. Yeah, James. What was your um, reading of it? I think defensively they were very mm, solid. Very I solid. Think yeah. Back line is very good. Uh, but like you know, as as uh, Aiden said, lumping the ball in. If you to lump the ball in high, you must put it in high over Mike's head, yeah. not behind him or not in front of him really. And they didn't manage that the last day. How did you see it? Exactly like the, exactly like that really, because they went one dimensional, and that's when St. Brendan's came back. And St. Brendan's were, were raw up front; they're very very young. Mm-hmm. You had Lee Moog trying to carry the can. You had probably maybe Fernand Egan trying to carry the can there as well. Like Ernan Ferris was out of it. Yeah. Wasn't as effective as he was. Oh, Gary was superb. But you have to call out the two old fellas. The two old stagers, I'll tell him, and I have no problem saying that about them because I'm I'm all for the old stagers, being one of them myself. John Egan and Dazzler. Absolutely outstanding. They tried everything. Tried everything they could, like. Tried everything. Tried everything. And you know, that's like they they, they know, right, we got to do everything we can to try and win this match. Trying to bring maybe 13 young fellas with them over the line and nearly did it. But Abidoni's. Base, as Ian said, from the half-back line. They had so much possession. Wasteful. It was so wasteful. And we had, was, then what happened then after that, Michael Ball wasn't working with some glory hunters shooting from under the stand and over on the terrace. They were ridiculous shots. Yeah. They never played through the lines properly, like Ian said, which they should be doing. Because they're so good hurlers over on the like. But, but thank, a bit. thank God for Daniel Leary in the middle. Got a lo- Daniel yeah. stood up. Hey, like, he's solid. Course, he was yeah. solid. He was did he get solid. four? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, very uh, good. John, uh, you were obviously commentating on it um, because we couldn't allow Aidan to commentate on Abby Dorney or James and Kilmoyle either. Uh, they're uh, too much involved by me and you can kind of, uh, you know, be neutral. Uh, although uh, Abby Dorney is my club now, I want to let you know. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Crossy. <laughs> turn, turn, turn that page um, over there. <laughs> I saw you shopping for holiday homes in <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. as well, the last day. Yeah. Oh my uh, God, Caravans. I'd be honest, I'd be honest <laughs> yeah, and, but uh, listen, John, what, what was your reading of it? I thought as well that they were very slow on the sideline in Abby Dorney, and I hope I'm meeting none of those down in the butcher shop, but uh, they were slow on the sideline to change things and to various. And, I thought Brendan O'Leary should have come on a lot earlier than he did. And O'Sheen Mansell uh, was isolated as well inside. And they brought Mike out to the party. I'm not too sure what that was a good idea. I think Mike and O'Sheen inside are bring O'Sheen outside to the half all the like, time. If you look at the mere statistics of the game, right? Uh, St. Brendan scored 1-4 from play. Abby Dorney scored 2-10 from play. No comparison between the sides. If you look at the wide count, St. Brendan's had 9 wides. Abby Dorney had 20 wides. So there's no comparison over territorial dominance, shooting dominance, yeah. everything. I and think, yet, yeah. by the 69th minute of the game, there was one point, one point between yeah. the two sides before Oshin Mansell got the, the match-winning goal at the end. That tells you everything about Abby Dorney, and it tells you a lot about St. Brendan's. St. Brendan's dug in with all the injury worries, as James said, with John Egan and Darren Deneen, absolutely inspirational yeah, figures. Too. They dug in. They shouldn't have been close to yeah. Abby Dorney, considering the way the game went. But it also tells you a lot about Abby Dorney. They got absolute stage fright in the last 20 minutes. Uh, whether, as Aidan says, it was that getting over that quarter final hurdle. They showed zero <laughs> composure in the last 20 minutes when the game was there to be won. They hit 14 wides in the second half. There were plenty like in twos and threes and straight after each other. Absolute panic. They were all over the shop, really, as regards... You wanted cool heads. The only cool heads were Daniel O'Leary, as we said, and they took him off, 
Uh, and, and he wasn't too happy with that. We could see it on by the sideline. I think he was more annoyed with the two chances he had just before he went off. Yeah. More than that. yeah, I'd say, but I think that was he was he was yeah. he was burnt out like that. Yeah. James O'Connor was inspirational, and then Oshin Mansell really stood up again yeah. when they needed scores. Jack Sheehan, to a lesser extent as well, had had some nice moments down yeah. the stretch. But then you go to the other side of the coin, and the one thing Abby Dorney will absolutely take from it is in the second half. I remember you saying it on commentary at half time. They cannot depend on Michael O'Leary to win this game on his own. In the second half, I think Michael O'Leary just got one point from a free. And then you had the Daniel O'Leary's, Jack Sheehan's, David Egan got a point. Oshin Mansell was, was very good when they needed him. They kind of won the game with Michael as a sort of peripheral figure in the second half. And that can only uh, stand them in good state going into this weekend. It's hard to win a game when you're in a headlock for 60 minutes at the same time <laughs> it must be said yeah, so. yeah well our reports his uh, back was like a dat board after but I can't comment on that obviously <laughs> um, James just a word before we leave this game because we'll be talking obviously about Abby Dorney but a word about St Brendan's I think I'll go they only won one game in the championship that was the primary quarter final against Parnells they actually um, have improved as it's gone along. They were unlucky with Fanon getting suspended. Well, I mean, it was his own fault, but still, uh, he missed the game. And, and then the injuries, like, yeah. I mean, to be missing for that big game, Eric Lean, the best man marker in the county, in my estimation, and uh, Dye, of course, Dye, which was excellent as well. So, both of those. So, but you, you would reckon that they're, they're a team. There's a work in progress, but how long can you keep John Egan and Dazzler still playing? Like they're yeah. they were they were their best players. They have applied. They're for brilliant. Free they're bri- <laughs> <laughs> they were brilliant. You told me that. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> Three of us from the office same day. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Reardon. I'd add Gary Reardon into that mix mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely outstanding. But the only thing I saw from the game as well, which I I was only very wary of, they butchered two goal chances very late on. Mm-hmm. Alfred. Oh my God. Yeah. It just happened to be one of the subs that came in, made a mess of two of them, <laughs> and they got through for. It's not three or four Nate goal Nate chances. Nate they Nate ran Nate straight Nate through. Did, to body. level it. To level yeah. it. Yeah, swear. Yeah, so had had inches. Got a great goal. Did. Oh, that was well, a super goal. But they could have got... It one that you scored <laughs> against your own team <laughs> in, uh, in 2017. They could have got three or four more yeah. goals. Yeah. They did cut through that defence. And Nathan O'Driscoll should have passed yeah. to Shami O'Halloran when he went for did. a uh, goal chance. He himself. was out very far. He'd be honest when he won. Yeah, like definitely. There was chances there. And as I say, it turned on Darren Delaney getting injured. Because at that time, the goal came out of that. Oh, yeah, scores, that, yeah, the next thing yeah. bang yeah. I was only worth three or four points that was a bit of a and they should have stopped it was a shiny they made, shiny Brazil made the run like he should have been right. he just gave a lovely flick inside the yeah. that's, yeah. Like, that's all you can do in that situation he yeah. was in he was in Tackling to the so road. you are Sorry, promoting a cynical play <laughs> by your <laughs> players well, if, you're, if you're on the sideline and you're a manager that's Jesus that's what you're roaring like take him down Taking down outside the 45. Oh, I wouldn't agree with that at all. <laughs> um, and now, we want to obviously wish Darren Delaney a speedy yeah. recovery. He has got, um, I think it's a broken rib. I think it's broken. Uh, yeah. Broken is better than fractured, actually. Come to straight, but it's obviously sore. So we wish him well. Um, he's a great guy. Uh, lovely fella and uh, a good keeper play with Kerry as well and now he's he, so hopefully he'll be around for another few years with uh, uh, with Tim Brennan's and I think they're a team they're over the next four or five years I think they'll be in a county final whether they'll win it or not is another matter so that's the first game on Friday night and then on Saturday despite Kerry being in Croke Park we had a game and on Saturday it was ballied off many people's favourites to take the uh, the title to win it this year and they're much in their way now by the way um, but yeah Bally Duff <laughs> uh, James is uh, humming and hawing here on the left um, but yeah Bally Duff playing and uh, they managed to get past uh, Lixna but again it was a bit of a struggle towards the end of that game highlights of that now uh, coming up Maybe give him as much space as possible so he can get involved. But ball you know, break, yeah. You see over the far side as well. You see to have Jerry McKinnon is going wing back and Jack Sullivan. Ball is recycled out here to uh, Daniel Carroll. Carroll with a strike from distance. He's got a few points already, Hold and he's going to add to his championship Thanks, tally. The first score of the game comes from Wing and gives it to Neil Mangan. Mangan is going to look inside now. Who's in there? But Podge Boyle. Podge Boyle is going to let this run on. It's Dara Shanahan now. Who is shadowing him? Podge is oh, going to try and get inside he... him. Podge has got inside him. Podge Boyle has oh, stuck it in the back of the net for Balinov. He's on straight away. He's Instant on impact. <laughs> one one by the captain, Podge Boyle. And a bit long. 
Luke Rochford is going to be underneath this one. He'll rise oh, for it. breaks all the way through now. And Evan Boyle on. is straight through on goal go here. On. Evan Boyle has his uncle in the middle. Evan Boyle goes himself oh, and sticks it in the back of the net. Oh. What a start for Ballyduff. This is getting out of hand already. <laughs> Four minutes. Oh, but Ballyduffer is quick. They're just going down the field straight away again. Absolutely. Here is Dara Slattery. Slattery moving forward on the run here. Slattery is going to pop this over the bar. Oh, Great score, score from the wing score. back. Gee, Gee, very Gee. good. He's going to go back towards Jeremy McKenna. McKenna is going to load it up here and go from distance. Connor Doesn't have the accuracy. <laughs> Conor O'Keefe and Pod Costello <laughs> looking Hang for the on, ball inside chance. there. O'Keefe making a nuisance. Oh! O'Keefe will off the ground. This sent it to the back of the net. It was coming. There was three or four balls were in there. It was coming. He was causing trouble. Conor O'Keefe. Not now have turned this game right really around here now. Jeremy, Jeremy McKenna. McKenna. Will he go Dara's for another long ball inside here? He Dara. gives it to Dara Conway. Conway over. is going to have a look at the post here. Dara Conway is going to send yeah. this and raise the white flag. They really are bombing. He's up towards Jack, Jack Rosson. He's well able to hit them from distance. Ah. From the far 65. But he doesn't have the... Score. Does he have the accuracy? Oh, he does score. have the accuracy. What a score. What a score by Jack Rosnan. The crowd are loving it here now. Licksna crowd the us. Licksna are in the lead for the first time in this match. After being two, it's going to be Bally Duff who come away with it. Daniel Carroll in the middle now is going to spray it across the pitch here. Luke Rochford is out in front of his man here. Has it in the hand. Well taken by Rochford. Oh, love it. Gets sweet. past O'Connor. Or O'Sullivan, should I say. Luke Rochford is going to fire love this score. over the bar. Love an important score. score. His first point of the match. Levels and, uh, up. Yeah, levels us up here. Heading towards, well, four minutes went up on the board. We already have nearly ticked towards He's the calling minutes, the ball, so I'd say. He's looking he for the ball. He's going to call for the ball here. Does the referee. Great half. Great half of well, way of Dylan Moriarty. Moriarty pops it back to Kyle O'Connor. And O'Connor goes up the oh, field here Jack now. Sullivan. Jack Sullivan has it in the hand. He'll have a look at the post here. Sullivan strikes That's off his left. Score. Jack Sullivan has the accuracy. Oh, lovely score. Has the distance. Working it long inside. Darren Podge again on Touch Boyle. Uh, this has been a great battle. Boyle has it this time. Boyle is going to have a look at the post here Pass from a very it. tough angle. Oh, Podge Boyle score. sends it over the bar. Great score. 1 3 for him. You can see every little turn. Yeah, he's definitely, I'd say, maybe midfield. Oh, he's gone midfield, midfield, yeah, he's yeah. gone midfield. As Luke Rochford oh, has Rochford's this on the far in. side, and he's passed his man. Luke Rochford is going to take his score here. Luke Rochford sends it oh. over the bar. He wasn't sure where he was. Looking for Owen Stack again from the puck out. And, and it's gone past him here, Owen Stack. Gambled on the break here. Owen Stack is going to send That's this over, over right the there. bar. Good that score. is a fantastic score. They're kind of looks now avoiding him with the pucks, really. They're avoiding him. They're staying away from him. He's, he's, he's going to go long inside. Oh, oh Podge Boyle has it in the hand here. Podge looking for a second goal. He's not going to get a touch there. Oh, no, he's on the ground. Free. Went for, oh, oh, it's ended no. up in the back of the net. Well done. A pull along the ground. It's looking like... Is it? It's Dylan Moriarty, Dylan Moriarty who's yeah. got it. They get themselves back into this sure, game for well a second time. George Stackpool. George Stackpool does very well there. Caught though with the ball. Caught struggled position. on the ground here. Evan it's Evan it. Boyle. Boyle knocks it out to Dylan Moriarty. The goal scorer, Dylan Moriarty, has popped it over the bar. Yeah. Five points now. Oh, it's Didn't a good get the strike he wanted. There is Lixnam in there. It's Ricky Rising, it. the new man in. Jamie Galvin has it. Galvin's going to pop it out to Shane oh. Conway. Conway is going to have a look from distance here on the 65 oh, yard beauty, line. Beauty. Shane Conway has sent beauty. this over the bar. A huge score for him. He's gotten away with it. JP O'Carroll recycles it back here. Daniel Carroll is going to pop it into the middle. Rochford. Luke Rochford in the middle is free. Jack Gives Sullivan it to Jack Sullivan. This will be huge for Jack Sullivan if he can get a score here. That's Sullivan cool, right, has sent it over, yeah, the, over the bar. bar. He raises the, the white flag. Code is going to go along there looking for Mikey Boyle. It's Mikey versus George Stackpool. Stackpool knocks it down and it's Luke Rochford on the break. Rochford is going to plow take along for man. down this far side here. He's got past the challenge. Stackpool still going with him. Got a Pops it inside in. here. Jack and right. Oh, and right lovely. inside. This could be curtains. Great and oh, it's a fantastic save Stacky. by Martin Stackpool. Great Dylan Moriarty was looking for a oh, second great, goal. Darren McKellig dives down. No, gets the ball, defending. says the referee. Great defending. On top of Derek Conway. Conway has to come. Well done. Goes over Jack Sullivan's oh, head. Derek Jack McKellig Sullivan, went well down. Done, but here Sullivan. is Jack Sullivan roaring back Good into tackle. it again. Sullivan is going to pop it here to Jason Bowler. Bowler has it. Bowler has a look at the post. Oh, nice he does it. Pops it inside. Mikey Boyle has it. Boyle out in front of George Stackpool. Boyle over the shoulder. Mikey Boyle has sent it over the bar. What a score by Mikey Boyle. That could be the decider. A huge score. Even as banged up as he is he's now, running out of the fence here now. Lovely Loads ball. of space for Luke Rochford. Rochie. Rochford can put this on ice for Belly Duff if he gets it into the hand here. Just take Rochford, score. No, he's will he going go for, for a goal here? Rochford will go for goal. Oh. oh, it's a poor shot in Stackpool. You're never going to beat him with a shot like that. It's a free out, says the referee. They'll have to get this going quickly. He'll rue that surely, but he time won't up. because time that up. is the full-time whistle. And Belly Duff... 
have joined Debbie Dorney as the second team in the last four of the Garvey's Super Value Kerry Senior Hurling County Championship. They've done it on a scoring of 315 to 116. And we're going to go to a quick ad break. And we so now they were the highlights of Ballyduff and uh, Lixna. Of course, Lixna had uh, the great Shane Conway back and Conor O'Keefe, who played up front, as you saw, and got a goal. And Ballyduff, and we'll start with uh, John this time. I suppose the early eight point lead, 2 2 to no score. Uh, and then they seemed to fall asleep for about 15 minutes. And then uh, in uh, the second half, they went in front again in the third quarter, and then they allowed um, Lixna back into it. How did you read that game, John? Yeah, it's been exactly the way Bally Duff have been in several of their championship matches this year. If you go back to the very first game against St. Brendan's, they built up a sizable lead and then fell asleep again and uh, allowed St. Brendan's back into the game and, and only edged over the line by two points. Um, it is a worry for Bally Duff when they're, uh, as the old saying goes, when they're good, they're very, very good, and when they're bad, they're horrid. So they, they are, like 2-2 two, two to no score, they were in cruise control. Off to a great start, Lixna couldn't live with them. That, that was only after 10 minutes. Yeah. By half-time, Lixna had actually gone into the lead and finished a, a draw at half-time. So the, their whole advantage had been wiped out after falling asleep. Obviously, you have to give a, a serious amount of credit to Lixna as well for the way they dug in because a lesser team at 2-2 two, two to no score would have thrown in the towel and uh, kind of accepted defeat. So that is a worry for Ballyduff. I suppose on the plus side... They did settle again and they started the second half really well. I think they got the first three points of the second half. And shortly afterwards, Dylan Moriarty, I think it was around the 39th minute, he got the third goal, which turned out to be really the key score in the contest. Because after that, no matter how Lixna tried, they might have got within twos and threes of Ballyduff. They never managed to get, I think, less than two points behind at that stage. So Dylan Moriarty's goal was eventually crucial. And he played uh, well. He got... Uh, he got three assists as well. He got 1-1. One, one. Uh, yeah. A promising player. And he was a very promising minor. He just ran into an injury where he was out for almost a year. And he's back now. But he's beginning to get into the contest. And I think he will take a bit of watching um, against uh, the, in the, in the semi-final uh, against uh, Kilmiley if he's to line out. Yeah, he's an important player uh, for Ballyduff, most definitely. He has strength as well. And there's a, there's a bit of physique about him. And as we all know, they were missing Jack Goulding as well. So... Several forwards had to step up the last day and uh, Jack O'Sullivan had a, a, an outstanding second half. Luke Rochford uh, buzzed around the place to good effect at different times. And then you had Daniel O'Carroll was fantastic at wing back. But I suppose really the whole, uh, the whole star of that performance was Podge Boyle on his yeah. return from injury. Like he looked extremely sharp, you know. His goal in, early in the first half was fantastic. Like uh, just burnt his man. I think it was Dara Shanahan buried it in the top corner. Finished with 1-4 from play, another three points from freeze. Then you had Mikey coming on to get a, a point near the end. And we don't know, maybe that'll have to be the role for Mikey as well this weekend. That's just a little cameo because of his injury and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. Podge was massive. So like Ballyduff, like we say, there is, when they strike form, they're arguably the best team in the championship. But they have these periods where they fall asleep. I don't think they know the reasons for that. Yeah. Maybe it's a touch of complacency when they go ahead in games. Maybe it's a touch of lack of experience in certain quarters of the team. But if that continues against a side like Kilmoyle, which we'll probably discuss later on, um, they'll be in big, big trouble. Historically, yeah. like once Benidorm got in front, there was no pegging them back ever, ever, ever. Like it yeah. was really like, and they are great for a quick start. Like, yeah, like I remember 2016 was they put four goals past Cosme mm -hmm. in the space of five or six minutes in a quarter yeah. final. You know. I like know. Once they get going, like they're they're usually very hard to peg back. So it's yeah. It's, you no, know, I just thought maybe was it the Lixna thing again? Matchups. Lixna got their matchups all wrong at the start. All wrong. Did they? Started out after ten minutes. They had uh, I think they started with George Sackwell and Podge. They had they were all over the shop. Yeah. They eventually had to bring Ricky back as well. They got their they put Darish on 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 Podge. Yeah. Dar I thought played a very good game as well. Podge yeah. was so good. It was like you know it was yeah. very hard maybe on parole Dar that. That Podge got in the match because Darren did well at times as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, just yeah. think, look at it, yeah. you say, Christ. You think, like, you, what he got when scores, say, oh, geez, he destroyed his men. He didn't. It wasn't that case at all. Yeah, but yeah. Ricky stepping back in there. Maybe Shane, too, got a belt early on. It was very, very Massive. physical. Yeah. The referee was kind of like, let everything go. 
He which did. I liked to, to an extent, yeah. but there was. He left Pod Costello and, and Conor um, O'Keefe. He left him at it. Uh, it was, uh, uh, because the, every time they clashed, there was three or four falls uh, <laughs> from both sides. Uh, both. And, uh, he and the said, ball wasn't even there. <laughs> no. And even off the ball, like when the play was up the other end, they were wrestling away and, and pulling and dragging. And the ref was alerted by his umpire at one stage and he said, Look, it's one of them to it's let fine. it at him. It's fine. He, he, that was the referee. He no, did start that pulling things. Good. He started pulling things near the end of it, I think. But at the same time, I think that's a good way yeah. to yeah. do it. The, the only thing about being ref- referees like that, a couple of matches I saw at the weekend, oh, them actually, but referees were a little bit inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were calling some teams for, for little things, and the other team would get away with it. It was a little bit of inconsistency there, a little, tiny little bit. Yeah. Not a lot, but you can spot it. But a referee leaves everything go, that was fine. Yeah. But it was just, I thought Lee Snag got their matchups wrong, very, very wrong. And Ricky was the. Ricky was yeah, the focal of the whole. He turned the whole game in their favour. And Conor Sheehy and Darren McElligot, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were Shane super was excited. carrying Shane something. Shane McElligot as well, brilliant. They yeah, were, they Shane McElligot. The but Shane Conway, I'd say. Uh, I thought with, he was going to go off. Was yeah, I thought, yeah, yeah. It looked. The thing yeah. was with Lee Snag, if Ricky is back there. Why bring Shane out then too? Yeah, you need to put Shane up. They should have left him inside. Yeah, they should. Yeah. The forward line. And they like Ty Brosnan very well could have been injured because he's had a lot of injury issues. But mm-hmm. I thought to not bring him on towards the end as well when you're looking for a goal was a strange Maybe bring Conor out a bit even. Maybe yeah. play, play, play two twin towers inside or something. Yeah. Conor yeah. Keith, like, but I think for a team uh, like Sna, who hadn't performed, we'll say, in the group stages that well, um, I think they did a fair battle against yes. Ballydoff, to be and fair to them. They're a bit disappointed talking to lads from Lixnay. Yeah. Yeah. They're disappointed because. Yes. They, if half time didn't come that time, Bella were on the ropes. They oh, yeah. really yeah, yeah. were on yeah. the ropes. They yeah. really were. Even Podge, we talked to Podge afterwards. He yeah. said himself, we needed to get in half time because we were all over the place ourselves. Yeah. They had yeah. lost their own shape. Yeah. And when they did have their chat inside and they were on a bit of a talk and they came out ready, they went to Gimmer. No, they went to five points. Because yeah, you notice Kevin got in, in control back did, there and everything. Did, he, he started getting on the way yeah. more ball in second half. Had to, had to. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and he was kind of. You were first, first half. half. Yeah, yeah. But, it wasn't even. But so overall, I think until they changed something. Yeah, but I think overall, in you'd have to say, Belly Duff deserved to win it. They did. Uh, they they have end, potential. Yeah. They have a lot of young players. I think a lot, and we'll be discussing it shortly. A lot will depend on obviously Jack Goulding coming back in, making an impact. Uh, Evan Boyle maybe upping his performance, and Mikey. If Mikey could give him a half, second half or say, it'd be huge. But Mikey, like Bart said it in the interview, he said yesterday we were playing golf. I have no, under, no reason. <laughs> Why would you be playing golf? Imagine John Myler finding out, James, that you were playing golf the day before a uh, county championship. He told, me, he told me last time to go away and play golf. So they're probably, <laughs> they're last time to do that. Yeah. They're probably good so enough that. at golf that they can enjoy the road <laughs> golf. Whereas if I go playing golf, <laughs> yeah, well, you've been enjoying it is the last thing. But yeah. this is bad enough. They well, can play soccer Friday night, football Saturday, play hurling Sunday. That's better. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, uh, unbelievable. That's the but yeah, uh, so we'll have to see how they'll react when they have everybody on board, but they have a, a fair game coming up. But I'd say, yeah, well done to Lixna. They're out of the championship, but I think they gave it Great a good shot the last day and contributed to a very, very good game. Uh, but Belly Duff, as I said, were they going into the semi-final now where they'll face one of the winners from last Sunday. So that's that is, game. Uh, just on Lixna, is there yeah. a disappointment a lot because maybe it was the last time they'll have Barry Hennessy on the side with them? Maybe, maybe. maybe Where's he going? Well, he could be going. He might have done for a lot of jobs. Like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a carry he's, job he's, is he's, it? Well, knows, but he's not telling us. Yeah, yeah, I'm he not. Well, he's, well, there's so many a former Mead manager is mentioned. Now I'm hearing the name of Treat Griffin being mentioned and Shane Brick, uh, <laughs> whom you played with. Well, he carried you on his shoulder, to be fair to the lad. <laughs> one, uh, of the best. one of the best. best. One, one of the best, best ever to play for the county. Yes. So there's so many rumours and... Uh, when you start talk to Paddy Deneen, he plays. He won't tell you anything. He'll give you a name, but it's not the name that uh, they're going to pick. And then Liam Ross will kick the touch as well. So sounds like I, the FA. I really it, <laughs> Yeah, well, they won't take uh, six months to pick him. Uh, but I'd say by early August, by the county final, we might have him. We'll see. But as soon as we have them, we we'll let you know. It'd be nice to have an Icelandic person. manager of the Kerry Harland team. <laughs> uh, it would. Well, we've had a, kil- a Larry man uh, involved in management in the Kerry team, and that didn't do as much good. Boy. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that's the belly duff. That's the Saturday action. Then we went home to get disappointed by Kerry and Armagh. Of those things we shall not speak. And then on to Sunday. And uh, on Sunday we had the first game was the champions, uh, current holders. First time they had won it since 68. That was Crotton Eves. And they took on 
a youngish uh, Bally Hike side, unfancied by some people here on the panel. And uh, they uh, started, uh, and uh, it was a great contest, and we have the highlights for you now. It's David O'Sullivan now on the run. O'Sullivan is going to look up inside, sends a crossfield ball. Colin Walsh is inside there. It's into the hand of Eric. Eric has it. He scoops it out. Brian O'Reardon. O'Reardon is going to have a goal from distance here. Brian O'Reardon looking for them. He's going to send a dangerous ball. It's into the hand of Jordan Conway. Conway is going to look for goal. He's going to cut back around and puts it over the bar. A great score. Um, for Belly Hyde, who's Brian Reardon, gives it now to Jordan Goggin. Goggin moves it on, and it's Michael Lean. Michael Lean has a look at the post. Michael Lean going for a point, and Michael Lean has to Jordan Goggin. Goggin looks inside. He's going to send a low ball in. It's one and one inside there. Into the hand, it's, it's uh, Philip Lucid. Lucid is going to turn and strike, and Philip Lucid has sent it over the bar. If you're and Jarrow Dunne who dropped it at the first attempt and off he goes now. Ball on the hurley sends it into the middle here now. It's Gavin Parker. Parker has a look and strikes. Gavin Parker has leveled us up. Just about finds Gavin Parker who just opened his, his uh, account. Tomas O'Connor now making a run from centre back. He's going to have a look at the post here and Tomas O'Connor has sent it over the bar. He started very well. He got in three balls. A chance to turn the ball over on the far side. It's Declan Dunne Dunne who goes to ground and Phelan wins it back now. Good battle on the far side. Here is David Sullivan now. Now has he the chance to get his score that he was looking for. David O'Sullivan has put it over the bar. That's a fantastic score. And you know what he... Killian Trent. Trent is going to look long inside there. It's going to break in and there's trouble now because Jordan Conway has it. He has the advantage. Conway is going to find Shane Nolan. Shane Nolan looking for goal here and he's found it. He's buried it in the back of the net. Brilliant refereeing and brilliant hurling because you know he played the advantage after Conway was going through and was pulled back. You might have thought it might have been a little bit long, but the rule is five seconds. That was definitely five seconds when Shane Nolan got the ball in the hand. He only had one thing in his mind. Goal. I thought the keeper could have stayed if it was kind of close enough to him, but... Crowded. And Eric Walsh. Belly Hike have position this time in, in the forward area. Nathan Gearn rolls off the referee that time. Puts the ball back on the hurley. Finds a pass in here now. Chance for Kieran Casey. Casey looking to get through on goal here. Casey goes at one hand. And it's got into the back of the net. Adam O'Sullivan couldn't keep it out. A huge goal for Valley High, and it's back to a two-point game again. I can't believe it. Was it, it, was it was nearly the fact that it was weaker, it was harder for Sullivan to save. He was moving before the ball was struck, and he just bounced just in front of him. He tried to flick. Valley High still have the ball. Colin Sheehy just bounces off to Moss O'Connor, sends the ball in here now to Philip Lucid. Lucid in behind, Beans where now. Lucid looking for a score. Can he bring it back to a one-point game? He has done. Flip and done it, who got into it. Rory Mahoney, lovely ball inside here, looking for Jordan Conway. Conway has it in the hand and gets past the challenge of Shamey Ford. Jordan Conway sends it over the puck of the game, maybe. Will there free allow one play afterwards? Philip Lucid is going to strike this. Can he put Belly Hyg in the lead? Yes, he can. He raises the white flag. It's 111 to 110, the Hygers lead. And they're delighted, like we said, you know, the, the crowd in the stands, they're delighted with that score. Like they, yeah, the referee's calling for a different half halftime here, they're going to be absolutely buzzing like. Absolutely, what a fantastic 30 minutes of hurling, and Benny Hyde are the men who go in the happiest. They have a one-point lead. We've seen two goals, one from Shane Nolan, one for the centre-back Kieran Casey. Listen to the roll. It's a savage puck out by Cormac Snatchery here, and Phelan Sullivan's got to run onto it under pressure from Tyg McKenna. He evades him, though. He's up on the run here, is Phelan Sullivan. Back on the hurley. Chance for a goal for Phelan Sullivan. Oh, it's nearly flipped in there. for... And Crotter going to turn this over, and it's Jack McKenna. McKenna is going to turn back around here. Gives it to Shawnee McKelligat. McKelligat gives the pass now to the centre forward who's Gavin Parker he's one point already Gavin Parker has got a second for the score to bring us back to level O'Connor hops it off the ground and stays going now he's going to look for the pass in the middle and it's Rory Mahoney Mahoney has a look at the post Rory Mahoney has leveled the sides up 114 apiece wins the advantage and is going to no the referee did, keeps the play going here now Phelan Sullivan just about got on the end of it Phelan Sullivan this one is dropping <laughs> doesn't get to the ball first time Bill Keane is going to come across here but he's going to be under pressure Lucid has he forced the turnover there Tyg McKenna going back there as well McKenna eventually has he got under under control takes a belt there Phelan Sullivan turns it over now Lucid gives it to Eric Walsh Walsh looks at the post the man is going to hit him Walsh again Eric Walsh loses the right flag for Benny Dawson they're in a two point lead pops it into the oh, middle God. looking for Sean McGrath it was nearly cut out by Philip Lucid walking back there they're all walking back there Phelan Sullivan lost the hurley now it's given to Cormac White a goal would be oh, crucial man. a goal would win it for Crocker you feel they're going to win the free in Adon Behan oh I thought that would stop them now it's actually brilliant for Crocker working up from their own full back and Bill King got the whole up but 
Yeah, I think it'd be even through the... Oh, I think it could have been charged more than anything else. But look, they got a chance. Shane Knowles obviously going to go for goal. That was like a treat. He's not thrown into it. What will he do? Cormac Slattery and Cole already on the line. Shane Nolan has a look here now. We're into the six minutes of added time. Nolan goes for goal! Goal! The reigning champions got there and pulled it out of nowhere. Shane Nolan again. Absolutely massive. See it in the replay. He went for power. Oh, it actually came up. Colin Waltz is a man behind it. He got it away. It's a one point game. And they will take us extra time. It's the last chance they have. Free in. The free in says the referee in Philip Lucid. He missed one from the same range. Has a look at the post. Can he find the target? Loose it. Loose it. And takes it over the bar and raises the white flag. And this game is not over yet. We're going to go to extra time here. The referee is looking for... Let's push the, push the waterway down the line. Oh, that's a fantastic cut. Shane Nolan looks at the post. Shane Nolan sends it over the bar. What a score. Jordan Conway to Shane Nolan. He's going to have to go outside. And looks for, is it Killian Trent getting down over the ball? Trent is David O'Mahony putting him under pressure. Here's Jordan Conway. Jordan Conway with the shot from distance. Jordan Conway sends it straight between the posts. Con Michael Lean wins this one from the long puck out now. He's going to have a look at the post, is he? Michael Lean, can he put it over the bar? Michael Lean sends it and raises the hole versus Shane Nolan. Shane Nolan has it in his hands here now. Is he going to tap it over the bar? Is he going to look for goal? Still going, Shane Nolan. No fouls is the referee. Hand passes it out to Kennelly. Kennelly doesn't get it into the hand first time. Jordan Goggins going down over. Kennelly now, can he get it into the hand? Going in there still is Derek Carney. Carney can't get down over the ball. It's found his way to Killian Trent now. Killian Trent has got it. Base from. He's going to look inside now. Looking into the corner. Who's in there? Loose it's in there. Michael Ian is there. Who has it in the hand here now? And a shot for, I think it's Tomas Gaynor. Tomas Gaynor. And Kratz has turned it over now. Now the game is really rolling here now in extra time. Rory Mahoney from distance. Rory Mahoney has found the target and sends it. Tomas Gaynor breaks it down for himself. Has it. Can't get it into the hand. Down goes a belly high man. He has it though. It's Michael Lean. Michael Lean still has it now. A chance to look at the post for Michael Lean. Michael Lean has raised the white flag for belly off. Nah. He used every step he had there now. Phelan Sullivan under pressure from McKenna again now. Oh, great ball. Kieran Casey. Casey got a goal in the first half. Will he take his point here? Kieran Casey. One draw. It's in. This is the first time he's ever ran there from Casey. Oh, he's gone down. He's actually doing the hamstring. I hope oh, it's just Casey. But uh, the goal is never on. There's a flexor shot. Popped up into the hands of uh, Sultu Darren Nolan, who buried into the back in their pass. Oh, sorry. Patrick Kenny. So it's two Patrick Kenny buried into the back in their pass, Sullivan. Go the way of Michael Lean, and Michael Lean has it in the hand. He's got past Jack McKenna. Michael Lean, Beans is coming across him. Can Michael Lean put belly high two points to the goal? He can do it. Uh, it's not Jamie Foran, it's Colin Walsh. Colin Walsh is going to knock it up the line here now. Here's Phelan Sullivan. Phelan can run all day. Phelan Sullivan has Eric Walsh inside. Can't catch it again now. Has to hit it off the stick. He's going to stay running. He's going to flick it inside to Padraig Kenny. Kenny, he's got one goal already. Passes him across the square. What a chance. Philip Lewson, and he gets the back in the net. Philip Lewson, hands in the air. The stand at the far side. The Valley High flag is waving. It's 323 to 222. The reigning champions have to overturn a four-point deficit. And the next thing on the sideline, Brendan Sullivan waiting for the whistle. Belly High looking to get back to a semi-final in the county championship. They've craved this for so long. This one goes in there. Can they defend it? Surely this will be it. It's the number seven, David O'Sullivan. He's gone down. That's it. It's, it's it. Belly High. Well, if you recovered from the excitement of that and the late drama as well, and that late equaliser in normal time by Philip Lucid, it was a long way, lads. And then in normal time, in extra time, uh, Michael Lean cutting loose. His father, our newly elected councillor, was jumping up and down in uh, the terraces. He was carrying four or five women with him up in the air every time he jumped. Uh, and uh, it was incredible to watch from our vantage point. Uh, but at the end of the day, it looked like Crata um, had uh, stolen it and were still in the championship when Shane Nolan uh, had that ball sort of deflected into the net from the free. But then uh, Dara Carney getting fouled and Philip, uh, sorry, no, uh, yeah, Philip Luce.
No, that yes. was a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 got the equaliser. And then in extra time, really, the lads got very, very tired, Crosser. Um, they got really, really tired. And uh, you'd have to say the fitness lads and the power of, uh, you know, that half back line and Dara, Dara Carney and Colin Walsh, etc., Michael Lean. Uh, Barry Haig seemed to want it more, James, didn't Hunger. they? Oh, Hunger's a great sauce. Oh my God, you have to see it. Like even looking at all the Barry Haig backs in the first half, like I was just saying earlier, we were talking about it. First 10 shots, it was 5-5, five, five, that's about, I'd say, seven minutes. Straight over the bar. The quality, the actual quality, that's what I really liked about the game. The quality of the hurling mm-hmm. was superb. Yeah. Absolutely superb. This wasn't dog and crap. It was mm. brilliant hurling. It was absolutely superb. And Crotta, like, like, Belly Huff, or Belly Huff, sorry, Belly High matched Crotta all day long. All Easy day long. Easy mistake to make, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they matched him all day long. I thought Crotta, a little bit flat. Yeah. I just looked at them, they looked a bit leggy. They yeah. looked a bit leggy. Of course, we said it about this group yeah. of debt early on. Yeah. It looks like it was a group of deaths because there's only one team left out of it now. Yeah. So, like, maybe, I don't know, is that taking yeah. it Yeah, well, of course. They look like If you look at them, like, Shane Nolan has been carrying an injury. We know that. Uh, he has been, he, he, he was sick as well, I think, along the way. Uh, so, it hasn't been a, a, a clean championship, let's call it like that, for him. Uh, obviously, Sean McGrath didn't come on till the second half. He, huge loss. He was a huge loss, loss to him because loss. he'd been pivotal. I mean, uh, Rory Manny did his best. Barry Manny is away. Bill King came back. How many days? What kind of training he had? He came back from America. That's tough. Killian Trent looked under the weather as well by his standards. So, you know, there was probably reasons why they were flat. But at the same time, when you're champions uh, and when you're trying to, you know, back to and back is hard, back to, to, do back is hard to do, I know. But still, uh, maybe more should be, you'd expect more from them. Let's put it like that. Maybe like you know, I, yeah. look at this. You probably give them a break like that because they met a different animal in Billy High. Yeah, it wasn't the animal I thought was going to come out. I, I wasn't know. sure what they had. Yeah, but we really, they really showed up in spades and Saturday. Yeah. and like we we sit in the terrace, beautiful afternoon for a match. I like, can, yeah. you could feel it. As the game was going on, the Belly High crowd nearly took them home. Well, a wave of emotion on the yeah. far side. Yeah. They were nuts in the stand. Yeah, yeah. They well, were I think mad in the stand. They did. Oh, they had a huge oh, crowd. They bring colour. It was a brilliant match. Yeah, it was they bring. A brilliant match. It was. They bring colour. And the other thing is, Brennan O'Sullivan, you know, and Boxer, they've done a great uh, John Lewis, oh, they've, they've done, done a great job with it. Yeah. Brennan's a very good trainer, and he had, I'd say, at least five or six of them. Shemi Forn was in with Kerry. Derek Carney That's was right. in with Kerry. That's two. Was um, and panel. Tommy Gaynor was there. Uh, obviously, um, Michael Eric Lean was, was there. Eric was in his uh, 20s. Eric was in his 20s. Philip, Philip Lewis had, uh, stepped away this year, but he had a training for last year. And, of course, Colin Walsh was in there once he got clear of his yeah. injury. It's had so, it's helped him, Yeah, it's, he- it's definitely it's helped, helped him. him. Now, uh, I won't ask you to comment on Crata, Aidan, uh, because of your love for them, but I'll ask you to comment on Bally Haig. Did you see this coming from Bally Haig? No, I, to be fair, I don't think anyone really did, maybe other than themselves. Careful now, I'll be um, playing him next. <laughs> no, I, to be fair, I don't think anyone barred themselves saw it coming. Um, we were all hoping they were going to give a real good go of it. Um, did we even maybe spend long enough looking at it and looking at them because of the games they had were, was against, you know, a, a kind a of poor team, yeah. team and, and Crokes who didn't really show up on the night at all. Uh, so we didn't probably look hard enough at them. Maybe if we had, we might have seen it. Yeah. But, um, and like that when you were I did. Philip Maybe Lewis. you didn't. Did you? <laughs> I did, did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I yeah. did. Yeah. remember you said that we, last week. Can we get week. that bit of tape uh, yeah, out there somewhere? Roll it there. <laughs> roll it there I remember Brennan O'Sullivan when he played with Kerry Head Rovers. Brennan was an excellent soccer player. He was. Uh, he scored a hat-trick in a game one day, would you believe, and I gave it to Nicholas Roach instead. <laughs> he has never forgiven me since, and he keeps arguing with me when I meet him, uh, Brendan, and giving out to me. But we're good friends, but at the same time, but I don't rate him as a hurler, but I rate his son feel him <laughs> as, a, feel him as a Nick. Excellent horror. Um, John, uh, add a bit of, bring back a bit of sanity to this uh, discussion. <laughs> uh, not to that game. You couldn't bring sanity to that game. Oh, that it was an amazing game. game. It was a seesaw, really wasn't it? I think, I think this, was really the, this was the day that uh, Bally High really came of age. That's the only way you can put it. As Most of them are underage. I think all general observers and people watching the game the last day probably felt, and I think Crotter went five points ahead maybe at one stage in the first half after they got their first goal. And I think people felt that Bally Hyde were digging in, they were matching them stride for stride, were, but, the, but, the, but that this wouldn't last, that there would eventually come a stage in the match where Crotter would pull away. Yeah. And maybe Crotter subconsciously felt 
that was probably going to happen as well. But throughout the first half, throughout the second half, and then like we could see like the way the way Kerry and Armagh went. Who was yeah. the stronger team in extra time? It was undoubtedly Armagh. Yeah. Who was the stronger team in extra time in this match? It was undoubtedly Belly Haig. Yeah. And it's very interesting because Belly Haig probably don't have the strength and depth that Crotta have. If you looked at uh, Crotta, we're bringing on Shawnee McGilligat, they were bringing on Sean McGrath, they were bringing on Cormac White, uh, Sean O'Donoghue, etc. They had the bench. Belly Haig's go-to man normally was David O'Mahony. They brought David on, and David was just off target. I think he missed three shots. Indeed, yeah. Three shots. Same at, spot. Yeah, same spot there. nearly like every him. time. Not, not like, like him. him. But then along came Padre Kenny, their second sub, and he scores the goal, the, their first goal in extra time, and he set up the second goal at the very end for Philip Lucid yeah. that killed the game as a contest. But I think extra time was the, was the moment where Michael Leon stood head and shoulders above everybody else on the pitch he basically decided that he was going taking this by the scruff of the neck he got three brilliant points from play Jeez. he was involved yeah. in everything uh, Crotta had no answer to him like his power his pace his running ability his finishing like Colin Walsh had done great work as a sweeper before that I, I think one of the most unsung heroes was Tomas Gaynor Tomas Gaynor was he was brilliant. everywhere oh, brilliant. Oh. Everywhere around the middle of the field. And, then and Kieran Casey sit the back. Yeah, Kieran oh, Casey. Yeah. His runs up field were incredible. Like, psychotic. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mental runs. Like, and mental, and Derek Carney. Yeah, yeah Derek, Derek Carney as well. Like, was outstanding. Like, matched uh, Shane Nolan physically all over the place. Like, this was basically a, an 80-minute performance from Ballyhigh. You know, they might have had the odd little dip here and there. But in general, their consistency with a smaller panel over that length of a game was kind of what... It never dipped. It never really dipped. No, never and dipped. I think that was the real surprising thing because we didn't really know the real Ballyhigh. We knew that they were capable of beating Kilmoyley, but this was a distracted Kilmoyley. We knew they could beat Dr. Crokes, but this was a Dr. Crokes who weren't at their level anyway. Yeah. And then there was obviously the three-week break, I think, for Ballyhigh. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really know what they were going to turn up with the last day, but I think we know now they are serious yeah. contenders. The match threw in at half one. It was over at 20 to 4. That's right, yeah, because yeah, the other game was delayed till 4. Crossed, yeah. Uh, yeah. When I, was wa I walked into the pitch at 10 to 1, Crotter walked out in the pitch at 10 to 1 to start the warm up. Mm -hmm. yeah. In what was probably the hottest. It was a day warm day. So. It was yeah, a warm yeah. day. Yeah. 10 past 1 before Betty Hikes saw the pitch. Bit early, yeah. And Crotter walked into the dressing room for max 5 minutes to change the jerseys and back out again maybe 7 yeah. or 8 minutes before throwing. That's a long time to be it out is. on the pitch. It is in, in that it, heat. So it is in fairness. And if, when you go deep into extra time, then. Yeah, the legs are I, I, I wonder, think I wonder. Yeah, I think the the thing that really stood out for me for Belly High was the fact that uh, the young lads took leadership roles. Derek Carney, when the going got tough, uh, you had uh, Kieran Casey as well. You had uh, Phelan. He went down on yeah, gallops. He was very good. He was uh, very good. You know, so do, those young players, even Eric Walsh, got the vital score. He got the vital score. score yeah. But I think Michael Lean really cut loose. Michael is always considered an athlete and a great thing, but I think he showed that he had brains as well. Uh, with <laughs> the chips. <laughs> No pun, intended, no pun intended, Martin. No pun intended. No pun intended. He showed he had brains as well. He definitely, he de sorry, he definitely <laughs> went um, and attacked. Oh, he was top class. Crotter. He, he was, was excellent. Class. He, he was, was really, really good. So, all right, Belly Higer in the semi final, we'll be talking about him. Crotter, uh, just generally from me, lads, without going into too much detail, just a couple of lines on them. Uh, as you said, James, be a bit flat, they will be, be disappointed. disappointed. Like, you're, you're defending champions, they'll be disappointed. Yeah. They will be gutted themselves. Like, it's, it's, it's very hard to do back to back. It's yes. extremely hard. How many times did you do it? We did it every time. But, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. But, you humbly acknowledge uh, yeah. Humbly acknowledge that. Yeah. But it's, I'm telling you, it's extremely hard to do. Because if they had got two in a row, it would be very hard to see them being beaten for yeah. three and four. They so could have got two. It's kept so going. funny, like when they won it last year, everyone said, Jesus, they could, off, they, they they could get three or four. That's it. And then they last said, that's it. No, they're going. They're, <laughs> they're gone. Like, it's they're gone. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just, like, it is. They'll get the lads back. They'll get the lads back. You come, you come from a club that would be getting one in a row, so <laughs> two in a row would be out. But, <laughs> outrageous. Uh, outrageous. <laughs> but do you think, the, and great neighbours of yours as well, obviously, um, and mine. Um, Crotter, um, look, they still have a lot of young players. They have a lot of yeah, good players. Seriously. And they'll be a threat again next year if they, they get uh, injuries-wise, get Barry maybe back from sure. Australia. Like, yeah, yeah, he's in America. America. <laughs> America. It's just a worry, though, like, yeah. like our first. 
Shane Nolan Lee 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 yeah, the wrong it, side yeah, of the, yeah, the, yeah. the wrong side of the veteran they will have to replace yeah. yes. they they how do you replace sure. Shane Nolan says how the man who is still playing intermediate hurling at 49 <laughs> and he, he <laughs> reckons guys in 32 and 33 <laughs> are gone over the hill but he's impossible uh, to replace uh, anyway yeah, talking yes. about a man that's gone over the hill John um, what do you think <laughs> of uh, Crasher do you think you know I mean just a word for them. I, uh, I, I think James. I think James summed it up there. They were a little bit flat, and, and maybe they, they ju- won the county league. Maybe, maybe they just felt that they were always going to win this game. Like I said, I, I don't think they would have expected Bally High to sustain the level for over, the oh, yeah, yeah, for the exactly. eighty minutes. And like, like we were saying, Crotta had the stronger bench on paper, but in the end, like Padre Kenny was the substitute who made the difference more than any of the Crotta substitutes. But I think what will really annoy Crotta is when Shane Nolan got that goal from the free, you're in the seventh minute of injury time, you know that the referee is just going to give uh, Ballyhig one last attack. So the last thing you do is give away a free in a scoreable position because you had the job done basically after Shane Nolan's um, goal. It's still hard enough. I credit uh, Ballyhig. I credit oh, Ballyhig. you have to. Yeah. I think it's... We call yeah. it balls. You call it Dara Carney. You, they gave the ball to Dara Carney. Yeah. Said, Dara, a shot, not a long you're fuck all, out. You're our man. Run. You take yeah. off. Yeah. And he took off. He carried that ball yeah. 80, 90 yards. Got fouled. Got another 20 yards. And got into scoring yeah. position. But the mindset Absolutely from, brilliant. The mindset from him. He'd have been standing on the line. Yeah. Watch the ball going to the net. Dane took off. Uh, the yeah. gut, the punch said. in the gut. Yeah. He we, walked we have straight a chance. back off he the said. line. Boom. Took the yeah, ball, yeah. Matthew went. And then, oh, and, 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 and then, like Philip brilliant. Lucid, Philip Lucid. Yeah. Let's not forget his oh, composure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's not forget his, his composure. Name is William Tell, apparently. Uh, he's he's been shooting apples he did his the McConville, the Oshie uh, McConville celebration. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, uh, he's been <laughs> shooting. <laughs> he's been shooting apples and oranges out in Bally High Beach off his dad's head. He, by the way, is Patrick Kenny Morang's son. He is. No. 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 Different Kinney. Different Kinney. That's okay, yeah. He's got the local knowledge. He's trying to steal uh, players for Kilmoyley from Barry <laughs> High, but he won't admit it. Uh, now, that's a roundup of the first game. Now, this, the, the last game of the four, but an equally intriguing one. Two powerhouses, two teams that don't particularly like each other. Uh, Kilmoyley and Causeway went to battle at about four o'clock. Let's see the highlights. And they're going to have a three man full forward line in there. Uh, Mossy Connor, I think, has been picked up by Gerard Lean, and I presume Tommy Barrett uh, has taken uh, Tom Murnan. Yeah, Simon Stokes gets the game underway, and it's Causeway in possession initially with Joseph Diggins, their midfielder and captain this year. Diggins sends it in. This is Colm Harty. He's going to try gets in front of Donald Kennedy. An excellent score. But they needed Colm Harty. He's a good player. Uh, he's a, he's also a player. Uh, who plays well when he gets early scores. Here's Darren Nolan from long range, the wing back for Kilmoyley. Good optimistic effort, it's more than optimistic. Behind Flor McCarthy, he sends it down towards Mossy Connor. Mossy, Billy Lyons in close support, so is Gerard Lean. Will Mossy score from an awkward angle? No, drops it in towards square. Big Tom Mernan's going to go up here. He bats it down, takes it a goal! Philip Mansell, back in the net! There's the physical presence of Tom Murnan on the from inside his own 65 on the stand side of the pitch. Collins is going to send it long. Will he go direct for a score? It's going in. Dangerous ball in again. It's touched. It's been touched into the back of the net. A mishap back to back. I think it's Gary Carey, the fullback. He's devastated inside there. Long free by Robert Collins. He went up with the hole, did Gary Carey, but all he could do was deflect it into the back of his own of Causeway. But again, they can't clear their lines. Darren Nolan, this could be an easy score for Ronan Walsh. He's plenty of time, he's 45 metres out. That's a simple tap-over score. Tries to find Conor Fitzell, but Evan Murphy will get there. Great sweeping work by Evan Murphy, can't control it though. Mossy will try opportunistically. Will Mossy score? Direct! Mossy does score! They're wasting much. Yeah, definitely, yes. Here comes Mossy again. Mossy O'Connor. Up against Billy Lyons this time. Matthew O'Connor doesn't care who he's up against. Johnny Nolan sends it back to Darren Nolan. Darren Nolan sends it into the corner. Who's going to get there? It is. Matthew O'Connor get there. What an offload to Daniel Collins. This is wonderful. This will be a great score. Who didn't perform at all. And maybe that gave him a false sense of confidence. They beat Crooks here uh, pretty well. As Ronan Walsh puts that over the bar from all of 50 metres. Great shooting from the Kilmoyley number 12. He, that brings up 2-10 for John Myler's side. Causeway, five points as the referee Simon Stokes. 
blows his half time whistle here at Austin Stack Park. Kilmoyley have a man. Uh, so that's Gavin Dooley. He's inside the edge of the square. So who's going to take him? It looks like Donald Kennedy probably is it. That's taken him. So very interesting. Here we go, John. Yeah, and the second half, Simon Stokes gets it underway. And I just seen Brandon Barrett has gone into full forward, but he's limping there. Flor McCarthy's picking him up. Dan Goggin has gone out to center half forward on Jogi Fitzell. But it's Kilmoyley, it's Darren Nolan who sends it up the field. Chance of a score already. This is the last thing the Causeway would have wanted. Massey O'Connor. Here they come again. Keith Carmi, excellent player. Sends it in. Lovely pass by Carmody. Is that Joseph Diggins again? Diggins as well. Can he get another score? Diggins. He shoots this time off his left hand side. He darkly here between Dan Goggin and Dougie Fussell. Dan has the pace. He's away from Dougie. He'll go direct. They're looking for goal here. They have to look for goal. Goggin's been put out. It has to be a good though. John Brendan, experienced campaigner. Barrett will go low. He does go low. And he's in the back of the net. He virtually put the keeper the wrong way there. Faints it to go. Tony Casey though. Well blocked down. That's great work by Kilmoyley, by Ronan Walsh. Ronan Walsh has been superb as well today. That's been one of the great battles. Ronan Walsh and Tommy Casey. Tommy can't do anything this time. The views have taken place. Who's going to be the winner though? We thought it was guaranteed to be Kilmoyley. We still think it might be Kilmoyley, but we're not so sure now. Here's Daniel Collins. Can he get his fourth point from play? Collins, he's been so accurate this point margin. Kilmoyley respond with a score. Evan Murphy goes up to beat Jordan Brick under the high ball. He's still surrounded though, Kilmoyley not giving up this one. They're still battling, so is Evan Murphy. But it's Kilmoyley who come out with it. Collins. Great play, is that Daniel Collins? Okay. This will be one of the scores of the game. Just as up lost it. Causeway to Keith Carmody. Carmody sends it long now in towards the square. To Dan Goggin and Gavin Dooley are in under the high ball. Gavin breaks it to Dan. Dan turns, great shot, great point. Dan Goggin, great score by Cody Fitzell's right in control here. Seems to be sweeping up in front of Dan Goggin and in front of Gavin Dooley. Can't clear his lines. Joe Diggins. They have to go for goal here. Goggin's inside. Diggins to Goggin. Must go for goal. Goggin is inside. He does go for goal. He finds the goal. Wonderful goal. Dan Goggin. It's not over yet. Wonderful play. Inside by Goggin. Joe Diggins. Joe Diggins a great ball to Goggin and Goggin with one hand. Tennis style batted it low into the net. But look. The work by Carey. Ah, oh, he's turned it back into a Tommy, Tommy Casey. Tommy Casey, he'll send it long. They need to get another score now. This is a chance. This is Joe Diggins. What a captain. What a player. Joe Diggins. Can they get it? I was saying Mossy was looking tired. He's got it back in his grasp. Oh, lovely by Mossy. Great pass. Kieran McCarthy. McCarthy's away from Feely. McCarthy. Straight down. John Mike Dooley. It's gone into the net. John Mike Dooley's devastated. It's gone in. Mossy to kill McCarthy. It's gone in. John Mike Dooley was certain he was going to save it. Oh, oh it's slithered in behind him. Oh. oh, that's a disaster. And this has turned into an absolutely fantastic encounter. We never thought it would at halftime. Here's Gavin Dooley. They'll have to try and generate a goal again. Dan, what can Dan do? Dan has to take the point this time. Dan does take the point this time. I think it's gone. Uh, Evan Murphy sends it long. Is it gone? Can somebody pull a rabbit out of the hat? In high, a chance, a goal, a goal, it is, it's it in, it's Gavin Dooley, it's in the back of the net, there was a rabbit in the hat, Gavin Dooley has pulled it out, it's not over yet. Oh my God, uh, what's happening here, we're not going to have another, it's like unbelievable. Right. Dooley's going to send it long, in towards his son Gavin, what's going to happen here, big high ball, oh what a kick, it's caught, Evan Murphy, what a catch, it's just gone wide. Oh my word! Evan Murph calls with time. Colin Harty, he's going to send it into square. Evan Murph is in there. They're all in there. It breaks over the head of everybody. That's over it. the head of Evan Murphy. It's gone out and wide. Sensational entertainment. There it goes. This is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Evan, uh, Evan Murphy. Simon was Spokes with a whistle in the mouth. Yeah, he blows the final whistle. What a titanic confrontation. Kilmoyley, 316. Causeway, 3. So, yeah, uh, Kilmoyley just hanging on at the end. Evan Murphy almost getting his hurry to that last uh, uh, long ball that was sent into him. And if that went into net, we would have a, a second game going to overtime. But I think Kilmoyley overall, great start they had. But they were, uh, they were 9 points up. They were 11 points up. Uh, they were uh, up again in the second half. 
and uh, they, they allowed um, they allowed the cause to come back into it, and that probably w- will be a small worry for them. James, um, I suppose, deserved win, you'd have to say. You predicted that Kilmiley, which we thought were flat all along, that they would actually come good, um, and that, you know, once it came to knockout, they would come to, uh, um, you know, they would, they would really hit the straps, and they did. Uh, what was you reading the game? I have to give credit to Myler and the lads, the management team and the boys. Like, like the most ardent of Kilmiley fans were all a bit worried. Didn't know what we were to expect, really, with the lads. They were patched up. Collins was just patched together. There was other lads for injuries. Like, But when it came down to it, we kind of said it last week, you need a team to bring the best out of you. And Cos and Kilmiley bring the best out of each other. Out of each other. Mm-hmm. So we started brilliantly. And of course, you have Massey back in. Like, that was... That really was the linchpin yeah, of Marcel all Connor, our attacking yeah. teams. Everything started there. We just we got two goals, like Barry Duff the day before, yeah. in a flash. Yeah. Really set us up, allowed us to play expansive hurling, as we call it. In one game, you saw the best and worst come on. Yeah. Second half, we lost total control. And why was that, would you say? It was just, we allowed maybe too much space in front of ourselves. We, kinda, we stayed man for man for too long. Yeah. Instead of maybe... Which, no, maybe. He didn't drop a sweeper back either. Very late on. Collins went back. Tom yeah. maybe stepped in. But that then concedes the ball to cause and a straight away. And it kept raining yeah, down. down so and it's, a kind yeah. of a, it's, it's a no-win situation. Catch 22. You've got to sit someone back without obviously leaving too much space up front. And we did that. It, do you know what? It was, it was tense for us. It was a desperate finish. I was, you're so nervous. Like When you're a player, you can control what you're doing. When you're a supporter, you have no hope. We were just... On the sidelines, or on the up in the terraces, we were Christ. Yeah. You were shouting in instructions. <laughs> you were I'm, telling the management. I what know to what do. I, we were all just shouting because we know what happened yeah. two years ago. Yeah, when Kaja came at us and got us back in the last few minutes and beat us an extra time, yeah. and then went on to win the county final. <laughs> yeah, that was going through a lot of people's heads. Did that hurt you then? That hurt. It did yeah. hurt. Of course, it did. And quite a last year hurt us as well. Yeah. yeah. So like that was all in the mind. Like, and and these lads, these are a brilliant bunch. These have carried us to Crow Park. These guys, the same. Guys, like when you look at it, geez, Collins just per- he always delivers. Paddy always delivers. Yeah. Massey always delivers. Yeah. Tom, the role he played a full forward was so crucial. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. We had Flora and Donald Kinney at the back, superb. Like they're just Dougie again, massive game in centre back. We just yeah. they when they need to perform, they will perform. Yeah. And I was worried that it wasn't there, and I should never have doubted him. Should never have doubted. We, you we train with them, and of course them, I do. Yeah. I do. I do train with them. I do, I like yeah. you feel it even more because you feel you're still part of the team. Like and yeah. John and and the management team of uh, Fla, Sean Mansell, Morris. Yeah. Like they've been looking at this all week, picking their team, getting their matchups, yeah. choosing who's macking who, who picking up who. Yeah. Like they really got a bang on. Yeah. But the, with the second half, we lost a bit of control. Yeah. Maybe it's because you're so far ahead, you're saying, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and just yeah. then again, maybe fitness too a little bit. Our lads are just kind of stuck together like a lot of the Belluff has. They're stuck together at the minute. And yeah. that's why I don't like the championship Seven week year. to week. Yeah. We should yeah. have a two-week break, not a semi-final. Absolutely. And then we should Daniel, have a two-week break. To, to Daniel said that. The everything like this. Yeah. Every, every team, we're looking for that. Like yeah, I heard We're Brennan, not getting yeah. this. Yeah. Brendan O'Sullivan and said it on the radio today. It's I heard them as well. Yeah, John? Uh, now that um, James has uh, spoken and has talked himself into uh, basically saying Kilmile are in the final without actually saying it, uh, <laughs> what did you think? Uh, no pressure then, and uh, we'll give no father at all uh, to their opponents, Bally Duff, uh, in saying that James fancies him because uh, he would actually play if uh, Myler, uh had 15 gone down with COVID or something. Um, yeah, no. I think it was the I think it was the ideal scenario. As we kind of hinted on last week, uh, this was perfect for Kilmiley. This was uh, this was absolutely ideal for John Myler. A situation where they were coming in, uh, nobody really knew what they were made of this year. There were huge doubts everywhere. Uh, Causeways' more recent performances had been probably of a higher level than Kilmiley's. They were probably going in in a better position, and then Kilmiley just wiped the floor with them in the first half. Like they tore us under. Causeway had no idea what to do. Two ten to five points at that yeah. time. Like five points in a, in yeah. a half for yeah. Causeway, and there was only one point oh, uh, from a, play. One so point from play oh, yeah. for Causeway, and that was by Colum Harty after twenty seconds. It was the first point of the game. So Cosby didn't score from play for the rest of the whole first half. Yeah. They just they just were abysmal to be fair. But then you could say that Kilmiley just didn't let him play. They were dominant all over the pitch like 
Um, Darren Nolan was good. Darren Nolan was very good. Donald Kennedy, like, oh, he put in a fantastic performance, like, on several different causeway forwards yeah, throughout yeah. the game. Poddy was everywhere around the and middle. Dougie. Dougie was, you can, you can see that red helmet everywhere, just cutting yeah. off attacks. He was everywhere. Dan- was Rowan, Daniel Collins just gave an exhibition. Yeah. And, like, we'll say in the second half, when he did go back sweeping in the last five or ten minutes, it was absolutely vital. Oh, but yeah. I think, as James said, Having Morris O'Connor back was uh, everything for him. Morris was the difference. It was the difference Pretty because, good, because yeah. the other players seemed to get encouragement and uh, sustenance from him being there. They knew he was a threat. He got he got two points in a row at one stage in the first half. One from the side. Yeah, they were lovely scores. And then you go into the second half, and like I suppose you can say that that Kilmoyley faded and all that, but you have to give Causeway great credit. Yeah. Like they dug in, like they just like Tommy Barrett was brilliant. Pretty Joseph brilliant. Diggins was yeah. outstanding. Excellent. Like. Dan Goggins started running at them, you know. Brandon Barrett buried the penalty. Uh, Evan Murphy was fantastic. Gavin Dooley came on and got a goal. And then you look at it like a big high delivery near the end. Evan Murphy was now kind of playing inside full forward. Goes up, fetched it, turned just wide. And then another one went in straight after that, just over his head. He couldn't get a hold of it. Yeah. Like it could have been a draw and it could have been extra time. And like to be fair, that would have been a disaster for oh, Kilmiley because gone. because yeah, the yeah, momentum would have been would, totally gone, would. and Causeway would have had everything. But yeah. Kilmiley totally deserved to win. In yeah. uh, two sixteen to one eleven, I've down here in my notes after fifty one minutes, Kilmiley leading at that stage by what was that eight points? Eight points, yeah. yeah. And still, there was only goal in it Causeway in the end. Do not go. They away. don't go. They've done it all year. They're just, and for what they had left out there in the end, like, I mean, Jesus, look at that. They're probably finishing 15. Like, if you yeah. told Stephen Goggin, that was going to be your finishing 15 in your last game, the championship. And you're still going, chance. Yeah. What round? <laughs> 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 yeah. But, like, in fairness to what, well, that's no disrespect to anyone that's left out there. That's just decided, and lads that were out there were nearly, the legs were hanging off them anyway. Yeah. Um, like, that's, this, the way they all dig in for the collective, like, is, is really admirable. And it's the reason, like, they were the last team I wanted Abby Dorney oh, to win the quarter final because we saw it all. We said about like, the consistency. If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you've a mental hang-up about winning the quarter final, by God, then Causeway is not the team you want to be facing yeah. in that match. Like they just stayed going, stayed going, getting Gavin back in the pitch, and Gavin as well, nowhere near fully fit. Managed no. to make an impact yeah. as well. And Anthony Feely as well. And Anthony yeah. Feely as well. And Anthony Anthony Feely as well. He wasn't. He wasn't. And I, I think, I think no. one one person who deserves a lot of credit is Gary Carey because yeah, when yeah. he made that terrible mistake, mistake for the second yeah. goal from the Robert Collins free that he deflected into his own net yeah, basically yeah. you could see him on the ground absolutely dejected that could have been the end of his uh, game yeah. it could have been the end yeah. of his performance he dug in brilliantly he and he had a he really did. really really good second half he did he did and I suppose the other thing uh, to, to be reminded of with, uh, with, uh, with Causeway is the fact that they have you know a nucleus still of a team and when you think of it, the goal they conceded near the end from Kieran McCarthy, like that that will haunt John Mike, obviously. But I mean, how many times has he saved them and how many times has he won games for them when he played up front? Exactly. So there's no blame to John oh, Mike. He was but devastated. It just happened. He was he devastated. Was de- was, you know, it just happens. And that happened. But when you think of it, that at the end of the day, we despite your goal. dominance, we that goal. Yeah, despite Kilmiley's dominance, there was just that, that kind goal. of soft goal, we call that it, goal. between them. Yeah. So, like, you're not world beaters. You realise that, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, shut right. up, Mark Twilley. No one in our carries at all says, you shut up. <laughs> right. OK, so Kilmiley, worthy winners uh, there. Cause you random, Fair very good. close. They had a good. And now, uh, actually, the betting for the championship will be going on now to the two semi-finals after this. But the betting uh, is that uh, Ballyduff and Kilmiley, who are meeting, are 7-4. to four. I think uh, Abidoni are third favourites. Uh, they are eleven to four, and I think it's something like four to one if you fancy Bally Hike. So it's pretty tight at the top. In other words, the betting is saying um, any one of the four teams could win it, not just Kilmiley. So now that's the look back at the weekend, and I would say anybody who was actually watching the games on Clubber, they were all live. Or anybody who saw the highlights, or if you're watching this show and have watched the highlights, you'll have thoroughly enjoyed the fair uh, because it was excellent. It was real championship. It was typical. And on Sunday, we had the belly high crowd in, the colour, the excitement, the sunglasses, the shades. Um, and we had the Kilmiley crowd in with the ducks. No, that's the duck pond, isn't it? That's fine. Uh, yeah, and uh, Barry Duff were in on, on, on Saturday. So, yeah, and Abby Dorney, 
came Friday night along uh, with Lixner. So overall, great weekend of hurling. And we're looking forward now to this Saturday. Obviously, no hurling on Sunday because of the All-Ireland hurling finals. So at least we get a break for that, lads. But we have a game at 5 and 7 on Saturday evening. And uh, we will preview those games now. Right, we look forward now to uh, Saturday evening's action and the first game in the Garvey Super Value Senior Hurling Championship semi final, which you will be able to see live and clubber, by the way, is between, I suppose, the two outsiders of the four that are left. One of them, of course, will have to be in the final. That's Abby Dorney, whose last victory was in uh, 1974, uh, sometime in between the two world wars, and uh, the <laughs> Other team obviously involved is Valley High, and they have won it for uh, 24 years. Nine, uh, 2000 was the last time that uh, Valley High won it. So we'll start uh, with it. And just an update um, on injuries is, as far as we know, in that game, uh, Aidan, I'd have, um, have Abedoni a clean bit of health as far as you know. Yeah, it sounds like it's all good. I haven't heard any. There was no injuries out of the game itself. Everyone came out of it okay. There was a lot of cramps and stuff like that, but um, uh, everyone is is uh, from everyone that played the last day anyway. All, all good, thanks be to God. Um, yeah, yeah, and Bally Haig, um, I don't think they had any lads going off. Should yeah. they hadn't, they were injured. Cramps so and stuff, but they looked good. Just, yeah, yeah, they, so. they they should be okay. Yeah, so they Hopefully, should. Because we've had enough injuries for one championship, like you know. It's yeah, been, yeah. To be nice it, to see yeah, teams. So yeah, we yeah, come exactly. to Kilmiley. I think they're not. They're, they're probably the team that still hasn't a clean bit of help. But we'll be discussing that after. So, uh, John, uh, we'll start with you. Um, Bally, Abby Dorney, Bally Haig, how do you see it? Their form to date has been pretty good. I mean, Abby Dorney had been pretty impressive in the group stages and they were impressive enough, as we discussed earlier. And um, Bally Haig, obviously the surprise pack is at this stage in terms of the team that beat the, the county champions. So they're going into it, although it's only a week's break, as James said, and that's probably something that has to be tweaked. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, the two weeks would allow knocks and bruises and allow them to get well, you know, both physically and the mental side of the game to yeah. get focus, etc. You know, because you have to come down from a high or winning an extra time game like Bally Haig have to, and then to come down to face... Uh, the marauding warriors from Abidorne. Yeah, I think uh, even though both sides are into the, you know, they're in the exact same position now with a semi final to look forward to against each other, they would have ended the quarter finals in vastly different frames of mind. I believe, like Ballyhigh would obviously have been uh, cock a hoop at knocking out the champions, and with their overall performance over eighty minutes, scoring three goals and twenty four points in total possibly beyond their wildest dreams of what they would have expected that morning of what that side was capable of producing. So they'll be on top of the world. I don't think Abby Dorney would have been top of the world at all on Friday night leaving Austin Sack Park, especially with the 20 wides, um, the way they just barely scrambled themselves over the line in the finish. Only that's, that was important to them. They haven't done it for yeah. a long time. Well, yeah. not a long time, but, but they don't do it normally. That's, that's what I'm going on to say. Like... Yeah. Uh, Oshin Mansell's goal, they managed to creep over the line uh, at the end of the game. But in a strange sort of way, I think Abby Dorney have much more room for improvement than Bally Haig had at the weekend. Bally Haig played as good as, maybe as good as they possibly could um, last Sunday. Um, I think it was real high level stuff. But I don't think Abby Dorney were near their best last Friday night. I believe that they will have gained a lot of confidence from the second half, not depending on Michael O'Leary uh, to a huge degree as they had been in previous matches. I expect a massive game from him uh, this Saturday. Uh, I think their defence is excellent. I think uh, the likes of Philip Lucid, Eric Walsh, etc., they won't get the same space, I think, that they got even against uh, Crotta the weekend. I just believe that even though their quarter-final performance was a lot worse than Bally Higgs, I think Abby Dorney are in a better position to win the semi-final. Oh, I just got a text there, I think. Uh, James O'Connor torn hamstring. 
Machine Mansell Scunt Machine Mansell Scunt play as the rules of Michelin yeah. Cats uh, they, call, they call that Michael Leary got hit by a tennis ball and something yeah no he, got, right. he chased his greyhound and pulled a hamstring because um, uh, his uh, greyhound isn't fast <laughs> anyway um, James yeah, uh, matchups what are the, what are the key clashes like if you look at the clashes. course you wonder you, you have to come, tag on Michael Leary yeah and you have to negate Ronan Donovan's influence on James O'Connor. Yeah. Their influence last, last Friday they, or last Friday night, they were crucial. Everything good in their backs, yeah. those two were involved. So who'll mark Michael O'Leary? Really, it's like Colin is going to sit in to an extent. He'll sit in in front of Derek Carney. He's going to sit in, but like... Derek Carney's going to take him, surely. I, I think that... You think Michael that would beat him in the away from Dara. That didn't take away from Dara. He's not going to be Dara going forward. Dara made five or six brilliant, yeah, absolutely brilliant ones. Like, he might have Casey to, can only, do that. only on size. Like, if you look at the rest of the backs, who else has got the physical size? Yeah. No one else. Casey no. got to Mass No one else. No, as you say, you could lose Mass again or him, maybe. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, you're, rest, going to, you're going to... That's you're the going thing to have trouble. That's, that's the beauty with Michael. Someone has to mark him. Yeah, somebody does. You immediately upset your opposition. You upset, exactly. But what both teams have to remember is... This game now is, takes on a different life yeah. Yeah. as to what it was. But they have to forget totally now about last weekend. But like I guess with that, they really have to park that. Because if they're trying to carry that wave on now with them, you could fall flat. Very, yeah. very flat. Yeah. And Labradorian have to think, right, okay, this is not just simple. And let's tip away again, let's tip away. They'll, be, they'll get their eyes open pretty quickly against Billy Hike. I thought what level yeah. they need to be at. Both of yeah. them really need to pick up. But as you say, with the matchups, Colin is going to drop. On the opposition, who's going to take Michael Lean? And who's yeah. going to take Phil? Like, Phil Lucer inside. Jed Mansell might take Brilliant Michael Lean. Jed is a great marker. Good marker. But can he handle Michael Lean? I don't think so. Yeah. It'll be one of... Um, don't think so. It'll be Jamesy. It has to be Jamesy. Jam- has to be Jamesy. Well, see, or Ronan. It depends, yeah. It'll be one of Could Ronan or Jamesy. One of think them has to stay in the middle. And one of them has to pick up and Michael Lean. one of them has to pick up Michael Lean. Could be Michael Lean goes. Could be Nile Mahoney too. Like. Could be Nile Mahoney. Yeah. Michael, Michael Lean could station himself on yeah. the field. He could. Like, he can... I'd give that man as much of a free roll as you could. Like, wing forward doesn't mean you're staying. Who do you think will pick up Philip Lucid? Like they will be, they will say Kieran Deneen will take Philip Lucas. They will think, yeah, I think myself he will take him. Yeah. Philip Lucas will take. Well, Mikey well, Clifford, Clifford. He's a big lad, a strong lad. Like he'll be. Yeah, he has pace Eric as well. Is, Eric wants his pace, size, and size. Then, like Eric played well. I think Eric played well the last day. Yeah, but well, I, I, I would back. I would back Stephen Egan. Stephen Egan again. Eric caused Stephen problems. It causes him trouble. Size, Shinabidorni. Size, why he throws? No, I Physically. Have to say that they were they were very isolated inside. So yeah. that's something I'd need to watch. Stephen had it tough against him. Yeah. He's, a, he's yeah. an awkward man to mark. He is a big like, buck. Like he's, and he's um, faster than you think. Yeah. It's just you think he's all big. big battle, and, being important. It'll be important. Yeah. I think another thing yeah. is Steve that... Steve Wilkeful, obviously. Yeah, of course he is. Bally Hyde also have to consider who takes Oshin Mansell. Yep. They yeah. do, they do, they do. See, so, I, I just think that's what, from Eddie Bjorn's point of view, it's what gives me confidence. I I just think we'd have that one couple forward that's enough. Couple of extra Yeah, maybe. Just that one forward that's enough. I that's what we worried about. I worried about that. Jack Sheehan, Um, even let's say... David Egan David Egan uh, Brendan Leary and Michael Slattery came off the bench last day they can all chip in with Michael or two yeah. of Michael. you never know what you're going to get off yeah. I just think we might have that one more and obviously look that's a biased opinion by me but uh, I just yeah. think we might have that one more for and the only, the only place I see them losing out is midfield yeah. I think Phelan and Massey Gaynor are better yeah. than the two boys uh, yeah. Yeah. judging by what we saw yeah. last day they're yeah. fantastic. Phelan was superb. Yeah. Massey was superb. No. I know. Look, like Daniel Leary was very, very good. Yeah. Nearly more as a push forward. Really settled, like, no, they don't was... teach me. You have a couple yeah, different guys. Would you say Jack Brendan was down to start the midfield? He didn't go there. I'd say didn't did even he? come on to the pitch. No, um, come on, Sandford started instead. You could end up with Niall Matney. You could, that's where he should be. That's where he should be. Likely. Yeah, yeah. And Will maybe, Brendan still be a, a bench player? I think, but I honestly like if, for Brendan. I think that's just his his best role now. Like yeah. you know, physically wise as well is the best yeah. impact he can yeah. make. Yeah, he's off the bench. I keep him for the bench absolutely. You yeah. have to finish strong. Finish, yeah. I think they have plenty to start strong, and you have to keep some right. people. Right. So let's get a call. Now we won't ask you and embarrass you for once, uh, uh, Aiden, and ask you. You obviously are hoping as well as praying and wishing uh, that Abby Doney would, would win it and they'd be your choice. And we won't I must say, it. though, no matter what happens, like it'll make for a great county final, either ourselves or Belly Hyde being in it. Yeah. Like, it is, it is great that we're going to have the same yeah. 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 It, It'll be... It's not it's called Yanks in mind, yeah. or whatever, yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. The, two, the two boys, the two teams were sitting at home listening to that draw and they said the exact same things to each, to each other as yeah. the opposite side would have said. Yeah. Thank God it's them and not to mind your belly off for Yeah. Well, yeah, what we obviously. were saying was, 
the only two names in the park working in Mylene Bellow. <laughs> that's what we were saying. Where are all the other names? <laughs> yeah. Were evening in the park? Well, two of them. The Mylene came out and draw <laughs> stops. Well, two of them. <laughs> two, of them were, stop, home. two of them were in another pot. <laughs> there was, um, yeah, there's another pot over there. <laughs> James, who do you think uh, will win it? I, if they can curtail Michael Leary to some extent. Yeah. And if Bellahag can carry just their hunger and their pace. Yeah. I think they have that in spades. But I would only... Strength wise, it's it's cast of two different two different styles, really. Yeah, two different uh, styles. Like in fairness, it like is it's, two it's, styles. it's very hard for a neutral to say Abidorn is going to win the match because they haven't showed no. anyone yet that they can. No, yeah. Like you know, it's easier for me to say I think they can, but like yeah. you know, yeah. we haven't seen that. James, do that, what do you so. think? I give it. Give, I on. give the nod to the Tigers. Oh, the, uh, I, I wrote him off last week. They won't appreciate it. So yeah. I give the nod to Belly Hag this week. Yeah. And you promise you won't steal any pairs of them down no, the line? No, no, no. No, you wouldn't <laughs> do that, yeah. John? I'm going to go the opposite. I think Abby Dorney uh, have more room for improvement. It's, it's one of the reasons why uh, I, I think Clare have a huge chance in the, in the actual All-Ireland Hurling final on Sunday because they didn't really play well in their last match while Cork probably played to their potential against Limerick I think there's more to come from Abby Dorney and I don't think Belly Hyde will be able to play as good as they did last Sunday so I give the nod to Abby Dorney yeah well I'm living there so I should give them the nod but I have a funny feeling uh, that I am going to give them the nod I could stop the Orient Express so Brendan O'Sullivan has won we do not tip us uh, but yeah, talking about the All Ireland final Sunday, obviously Con McLean, who's playing cornerback, mm-hmm. is yeah. son of uh, Ali Edward, Edward, Edward yeah. who played and won a county championship with uh, St Brendan's in 1990, and his grandfather would be Butch, uh, who uh, won a championship medal with Crata in 1968. So there you have it. History, a Kerryman starring Croke Park. Anyway, so that's the first semi-final. Now, the second semi-final is, more, is eagerly, probably more eagerly anticipated than the first, with all due respects to Barry Hyke and Abby Dorney, because it's the big clash. It's the clash of the team with 26 titles, Kilmoyley, they love that, and Ballyduff, 25. So uh, either one could, but they could beat the final as well, move one clear or draw level. So... The match is on at seven, and uh, James, now injuries. Now, I know you can't reveal all, obviously, but it's safe to say that Dougie Fitzell, I think it's well known in North Kerry, that Dougie has a, fra- a broken ankle, or he's some fractured ankle, he's something, Dougie won't be playing. I don't think he will. I, I, do not, I wasn't there this week now with the Leds, but from what I've heard from a lot of guys, he's not in good shape. Like, but yeah. As for the rest, Leds, do you know, they all seem to train. Yeah. In, do you know, like Despite every the other, fact that you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> like every other club, we're just patching fellas up with the breaks. The, 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 the oh weeks break, yeah, every club is the same. Yeah, They're patching just... lads up. And JC, really, yeah. some violin music, please. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, that, all that being said, all that being said, it's like Causeway again. This is Kilmarie Payoff. Yeah. This is two heavyweights going at it. Yeah. And like we both have that killer. 15, 20 minutes where you can wipe another team out. Yeah. But both teams, as we've seen, have slept for another 10 minutes. So <laughs> yeah. that'll keep us going and we'll have a little snooze. Yeah. So it depends how much damage can we do when we're on top, how much damage can they do when they're on top. Because there is going to be parts of this game where Kilmile are going to have a dominate 15 minutes, Belly Duff going to dominate for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Who can do the most damage and who can limit the other team to what they're doing at that time? Like, yeah. Yeah. Matchups are going to be crucial. Matchups are going to be crucial. Mm-hmm. Personnel is going to be crucial. Who both teams get on the field? It's yeah. really and who really stays on the off. field in terms of injuries. Like yes. Mossy O'Connor, he had a hamstring where it was torn off the bone or That's whatever, it. and he's back and he looked very good and sharp the last day. But you know, a week and, later, yeah. what's he going to be like? Let's hope nothing happens that he can get through the sixty minutes or whatever and play. Daniel Collins hasn't been. 100% all year, but Daniel will play and he give his all. Anyway. Paddy O'Connor, you have Luke Whitzel, I'd say is out. Robert Collins went off injured. How serious is that injury? Coleman Savage was on the team to start and didn't start. We don't know how he is like. So I think Kilmiley's chances may well depend, Aiden, on who they can actually get on the pitch. Yeah, I suppose Jordan there, like you'll, the, if you're John Myler, you're expecting a bit of a reaction from him, I suppose. You know, it didn't play 
He was sick, actually. <laughs> yeah, there was, yeah, there, he, there was reports that he, that he had COVID. Yeah, he, he yeah. wasn't up to yeah. his standard. Like he came off as a sub and yeah. or came off uh, substituted off. So you'd be hoping for a reaction out of him. And um, it's funny, like you're looking at, I'm looking at like Philip Ansel there and Luke Rochford, two forwards who won't be getting the attention everyone else will be in what's a really stacked forward line for both, for the two teams. And they've both been chipping away with goals there. Like Phillips turned into a right goal scorer, like for for yeah. some yeah. Island. Yeah. Luke Rochford yeah. has gotten goals as well. Like, and it could be two players like that where they just go yeah. under the radar. Not big names, up, not yeah. the big yeah. names. Yeah, it's two they fellas who yeah. come in underneath the radar, and they could be the guys to get the vital goal there. John, not anymore, I've just said it. <laughs> they're no good. Right, well, yeah. we need to map, map them now. <laughs> I know, yeah. My radar's a lot lower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aidan is trying to get every donor to a county final and the other two... Whatever way uh, he can. Whatever, whatever way, way he can. can. <laughs> uh, John, there's also Jack Goulding is back and now Podge has played, so hopefully he's fit. And we were talking earlier about Dylan Moriarty, hopefully he starts. But look, Mikey Boyle, he could have a big part to play even a cameo of 10 or 15 minutes in a game because of his experience. He won't panic. He has that composure he has, and he's a leader. Now, Kevin Goulding has been filling in from Canada back and doing very well. If Mikey was to come on, would you bring him at full forward or would you bring him back as a sweeper? I don't think you need to bring him back as a sweeper, uh, especially with the way Kevin Goulding is and his injury. operating in that position. And, and Mikey mightn't have the mobility to cover that length uh, across the half-back You're not saying line. He's and in, slow, are you? And it, no, I, with his current injury, oh, yeah. like as, as regards sweeping in front of the full-back line and across the half-back line and everywhere. No, I think the Kyle O'Connor probably versus Massey O'Connor could be the two uh, a serious yeah. potential match-up. Like, uh, yeah. M- Kyle is probably the best maybe to pick up Massey because of their size yeah. and the He's way... He's been playing very well with Kerry. No. Yeah. yeah, so that could be that could be a fierce battle. Like, when Ballyduff play Kilmoyle, it's kind of like farm really goes out the window. It's like... Celtic and Rangers? Yeah, it's like all these great rivalries. Like, you know, you've the... City tr- and United. You've the... You've That's the, not a rivalry. You've the... <laughs> Liverpool and... <laughs> you've the, tw- the 26-time champions against the 25-time champions. And... Uh, Neither will be happy to see like uh, Causeway and Crotta as the most recent champions, and they will both feel that if they win this game, no disrespect to Abby Dorney or Ballyhig, like there will be people in Kilmoyle and Bally Duff, maybe not necessarily the current players, but to, who will feel that the winner of this game should be favourites yeah. to go on and win yeah. the championship. The like, yeah. yeah, it's going to be. Uh, it's. It, it it's. I don't. I don't necessarily feel that's going to be the case, but. Um, <laughs> But um, that will be that will be the feeling in general, like supremacists. It, <laughs> Absolutely, it will be. Cook, it will be a fifty-fifty match. Like both of them have had their periods, like we said, where they've looked really good, and then within ten minutes they're asleep and they're conceding loads of scores. Yeah. So whoever is more consistent over the full course of the game, I I actually think in the heel of the hunt, the return of Jack Goulding this week yeah. might just tilt the balance very, very slightly in favour of Bally Duff. Because if you look at all the scorers on both sides, this is an extra dimension that Bally Duff didn't have last weekend and they still scored 315 without him. But he brings an awful lot to the party, as we saw in the earlier games. And it's not just his score and it's his vision in uh, creating goals and scores for other players. And with Dougie Fitzell probably out as well and a doubt over Robert Collins. Like we said, we don't know the story with um, Coleman Savage. Um, so I think Kilmoyle... His father, Jim, would give you a bag of spuds, by Kil- the way. Kilmoyle might just be that slightly small bit vulnerable at the back. And yeah. I think... Uh, it's only the middle of that defence, I, so, yeah. I think Jack Goulding, yeah. I think Jack Goulding's return might just tilt it in favour of Ballyduff. Aidan, if you were in charge of uh, Kilmiley, God forbid, if you were in charge of Kilmiley, would you shift Ronan Walsh maybe back to defence? Oh, uh, I wouldn't touch Ronan. I think he's, he's, he's nailed on to be, if we'd all-stars, like he's a nailed on all-star where he's been playing. So far, 12, yeah. he's been class, in fairness. I wouldn't yeah. touch him. Um, it's very hard to pick who does go there, though, in, in fairness, if there's no Dougie, like, and especially, like you said, because even it would have been fascinating to see how Dougie would have dealt with Jack Gould in there, yeah. occupying him at centre back. Like oh, I think he'd be an ideal for Jack. He'd be Dougie ideal likes, for but Jack. Dougie likes to more mark the space rather than yeah. the man. Like, so yeah. it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. There. And let's not forget that the Dougie absence is on top of James Godley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so he's a massive player for Kilmoyle. And their half back line, if Robert doesn't start, is wiped out more or less. Yeah. 
Now, before, before we depress... We'll have to drop Daniel back there as... Jeez, we but not as a centre-back, yeah. but he'll have to play... He'll have to drop out. He'll be in midfield. Least, Daniel yeah. will be in midfield and with Toddy Connor. I can guarantee you. He knows. You see the way he looks at us? James knows, but he's at pains. And he's under instructions from John Myler uh, <laughs> to make his appearances um, uh, and to be talking about Kel Miley very, very little and to give away nothing. So, John, if you have to watch this, I know you won't watch it, but you might get a clip. We are telling you now that James has taught us absolutely nothing. Uh, we have other moles in Kilmoyle. I don't know it's a moles. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, know know I don't think Kilmoyle can afford to drop Daniel Collins back. He, five no, points no, from play, and, and the way the way play. the way he played the last day, he he made everything tick in that forward yeah. line. If you drop him back to midfield, I think it's a, you're weakening the forward line as well. You're already yeah, the back line will be weakened. I wouldn't drop him back. Like well, if, if if if. Uh, yeah, maybe Tom might have to go back to a six again like he always does. <laughs> know. Look, it's ah, well, would Tom have the legs with his injuries? Probably no. he says himself not. I mean, he, he said, probably no. wouldn't himself like no. it. He had to drop back at the end of that game. He still got, but yes. the one thing I say about that, he got 60 minutes under him. He got yeah, 60 he minutes last day, yeah. which Tom, for, uh, for the injuries he's had this year, brilliant stuff. I'd look at Bennett off as well. What happened to him against Six now? Kevin Goulden was named at six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He wasn't before. No. He was named a 15 to come back. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, yeah, you're a natural six. Are you a natural six? No, you're not. No. You step out, like, what is there? What are they going to do there? So we have to yeah. look at it ourselves. And, like, it's, it's their defence as well. Like, you kind of have to wonder. Yeah. I know Jack Goulding's an X factor coming in. Yes, he is. Yeah. But so much revolves around Jack Goulding then. Yeah. Where do you lose out everywhere else? Yeah. Like, Kamali probably will have to look Anthony at ourselves. Anthony Kavner well. is a two, but is he a natural two? A wing back. He's, he's a, a good cornerback as well, though. Good cornerback, he is. but he's a wing Adam back. Adam Seagull, Adam really, I think, and he, he, mightn't mind, he might mind me saying this, but I'm only saying it for the sake of what I've seen so far and seen him in action previously at under 20 level and with the club. He's got to up it a bit. At midfield, he hasn't been. I think he's more a wing back or I a wonder. Back. I wonder, Mort, if they want to keep Kevin Goulding sweeping. Will they put Adam Seagal in general play back to centre back on Daniel Collins and, and drop Jack Sullivan See, in midfield? Their stat should be missing though, really. Probably limits will, yeah. their decision making yeah. and those kind of. He's gonna, you he looked concussed like last year, right? So he looked, yeah. That, he yeah, didn't look both good. teams are really. Just we have to see who will come out. out there. Throw the names into a pot like, and see who's there. To be fair, yeah, really. I think. It's like a mash uh, unit, both dressing it rooms, is. and particularly Kilmiley, whoever comes out of that. With their level of fitness, but yeah. there will lads start, I presume, who won't be 100%. That's a fact. There as, as That's a fact. As replacement, like, you know, you'd imagine, like, he's, he's a little bit since he came off the bench. Like, like if Dara's not playing, like, it has to be surely JP that starts. That's JP, Jack he's come in, maybe. He's, play, he's, he's played very well. Unless yeah. Liam, Liam Boyle himself, the chap, would come on. Um, try it. You never know. <laughs> Might try it. Well, his son. Evan, would you be, would, Evan, James, would you be a small bit concerned the way that even when the game was going against Kilmoyley last week in the second half, that John Myler only used two substitutes off the bench? I think just Kieran McCarthy and David McCarthy. He didn't seem to have full trust maybe in the rest of the bench to make more changes. While Bally Duff, as well as Mikey, um, Jack Enright, Jack Enright. JP O'Carroll, and Jason Bowler came yeah, on and Goulding, made impressions. Uh, yeah. Goulding, David Goulding. Right, if you, historically, you look at Kilmoyley. We yeah. won four in a row. I'd say we made one change in four years. Yeah. Ever. yeah. We never changed our team. No. We thought if those fellas can't get us through the hour, good luck. So you're either in there for the hour. If you're a sub on the Kilmiley team, you might as well go to Bannon <laughs> Beach. If you'd ask fellas to the four in a row team, <laughs> then we, the most change we made in those four years was maybe minimal, minimal, only yeah. four solids. These lads, we trust these lads get through the 60 minutes. We yeah. trust them. Okay, lads, I'm looking now for a, uh, a, a pick. Uh, who who we, who is going to get to the final to join either Abby Dorney or Barry Haig? We have a split panel on that, I think. I'm not too sure. I think I might be on the fence on that one. Um, again. Again. <laughs> again. Uh, we'll start with Aidan this time. Uh, Barry Duff, Kilmiley. You friends in both places? Well, very few. I <laughs> some relations in one place. Um, yeah. It's very hard to call it, like... Yeah. No, is it that I just You've don't been really... Paid, you've <laughs> been paid just big money. It's like pick your price. Who do you want to meet in yeah. the finals? What <laughs> you're thinking? Uh, you're being paid is. big money yeah, to <laughs> make a call on it. Come on. Um, <sighs> who can you beat, so? Call it that way. Who no, can have it already beat uh, in the finals? Uh, they no, can't beat Bally Dove, so it has to be Kilmiley. I just think with with the injuries with Kilmiley... There can be replay in these, by the way. 
Yeah, it, it, it'll go an extra time, but there won't be penalties. Oh, no, no penalties. penalties. No, okay, it goes to the okay. following weekend. Okay. Draw. <laughs> <Three split. laughs> oh, no, I think I think belly off maybe slightly. Belly off maybe. Okay. An extra time. <laughs> okay, after extra time. Uh, one James, word, okay. That's it. One, one word, Kilmiley. How confident are you? That's just it. One word, Kilmiley. That's it. Could you ever tip against them? Never. If it, actually, Never. to be fair, I, I, I already disagreed myself because I said 15 minutes into the cause of the game, Kilmiley, you're back. Yeah. So, uh, you go off Kilmiley. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. Okay. Okay. At least he's off the fins. <laughs> I know, yeah. We'll get Jim to get you a bag of fuds. <laughs> Jim Savage. Uh, John. Um, completely neutral. The voice of reason. The voice of reason. I'm going to say belly duff by a whisker. Uh, yeah. Because of the return of Jack Goulding in particular, because of the Kilmiley injuries, and because I've just felt since the start of the year before uh, a slitter was poked that this potentially is uh, belly duff's year. So I, 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 yeah. I can decide that in the final <laughs> if they meet. But uh, yeah. no, I, I, I think a tentative, very tentative, hesitant nod, but I do think belly duff can win. Yeah, well, I think that. Uh, I think it's going to be a very close game. You know, you'd be tempted to call it a draw, but I think at the start of the year I had Bally Duff in the final, I think. Um, but that was it. Uh, I thought Crotter would win it and Crotter are gone. Uh, so therefore, now, uh, I, think, I think because of injuries, I'm not certain that the lads who will start the next day and some of them won't. And I think... Kilmiley can't afford injuries because they were without certain players in the early rounds uh, for different reasons, including the late JP. They didn't shine. Now, they had them the last day. Mossy was back, etc. I accept that. But I think, and uh, John Myler, as I said, I went to college with him. So if he hears this, he mightn't come in into you again, although he never does because it's, uh, <laughs> it's Mar- Morris Mornan that talks to us. Um, and when you ask uh, John Myler, is he managing? Uh, Kilmoyle, he, he says, no, I'm not. Uh, talk to Morris. Uh, <laughs> so that's the story with John. But yeah, um, I think maybe uh, Belly Duff just, but I wouldn't be surprised, and I mean, this is all, the stating the obvious, <laughs> that Kilmoyle could, could take them. But the only reason I'm going against Kilmoyle really is injuries. I fear that the knowledge I have of the players that they have, that maybe they might struggle in that department, and if they do, they have a lot of holes, as the man said, to, to, to fix or to fill, and that could cost them against a team like Bally Duff, who have a nice mixture of youth and experience. So that's it. So we have um, Kilmiley. Uh, we have two for Kilmiley, is it? Mm, two. And two, two for Bally Duff. Yeah. Split. So JC has the split vote, has the <laughs> decision. So, is it Kilmiley or Bally Duff? A draw. <laughs> oh. A draw. JC is decided, John C has decided, our, our producer and cameraman, he decided to sit on the fence. Um, so, uh, that he, he's of no help to us, really. Now, so, that's our review and our preview, but I have a little bit of housekeeping to do. First of all, uh, look, uh, these games last weekend were brilliant. This weekend we promised two great semi-finals. We've discussed them there. And you can see them only one place live in Clubber. And I reckon because the ladies' final is on and we wish Kerry well against Armagh at 7.15, the only place you'll actually see or hear the, um, the entire uh, second game is, uh, that's Kilmiley and Ballyduff is on Clubber. So I would implore you to either buy the game, subscribe, or what's better is the annual pass. It's great value. There's going to be hundreds and thousands of games, even at this stage. Um, uh, we have Tipperary, we have South Tipperary, North Tipperary, East Tipperary, West Tipperary, we have Watford, the Longford Football Championship has started, awfully, all over the country. And there's darts and Formula One and everything else in it as well, but in Harley. And remember, next weekend, and we'll be previewing this next week as well, uh, there'll be a special preview. The Senior Intermediate Club Championship starts in Kerry. And you have teams like Dr. Croaks facing uh, Dingle on a Saturday night. You'll be able to watch that. You have the Clifford Brothers and Fossa taking on Beaufort, Sean O'Brien um, and Sean Coffey. Uh, there's some fabulous uh, fixtures on that weekend in the Intermediate and Senior Club Championship. They're all on, on Saturday evening. So you'll be able to watch some of them and look back on others if you have the pass. So I would implore you. I think it's great value. It's 149 something, another 95 loose change. 
uh, get the annual pass and you'll see the entire, not long will you see the semi-finals. There's a good chance as well that you might even see on Clubber the county senior hurling the championship between Belly Duff and Belly High. Sorry, uh, <laughs> between Abby Dorney and Kilmoyle. It could be anyone. Uh, but that could be on because that's on, on August the 4th, Sunday, August the 4th, as we understand it right now. And if it is, it's going to clash with the ladies who G Kahar uh, do, of course. So we might have a chance, we'll see, of, uh, of bringing streaming live to the Kerry final as well. So look, it's great value, lads. And listen, forget those old things you have at home that you can watch it for free. This, obviously, camera work and commentators, etc., etc., James have to be paid <laughs> and uh, that means uh, that um, it costs money to produce and to pr- present the product and I think so far the feedback has been great from everybody and we thank you for your encouraging words as well uh, and we brought the games into your homes and especially for the people that are away the diaspora and the older people who can't get yes. the games like James McCarthy uh, anymore uh, so there's an uh, app is there a new app there's a new there's app, a new app yeah. coming out there's an Android app and there will be uh, an app for your iPhone as well but the Android app is there so you can have it in your phone for the younger generation so there it is so you have every incentive now uh, you have two semi-finals come up possible final you have a whole raft of club championship fixtures in Kerry and county championships in September right up to the end of October and after that we'll probably be covering Camogie and everything else that moves club championships everything. club championships monster you never know so loads Quite coming up so listen you know thanks for your support but we need you now to subscribe and uh, to buy that either annual pass which I think is great value um, and also you can actually buy the games individually if you want so that's about it uh, for now. I'd like to thank my panel. Very interesting discussion. We went on a bit longer than uh, we intended. That's because the boys don't stop talking. Uh, but I'm, and my middle name is Brevity, as you know. Uh, I would like to thank... <laughs> Nobody believes that. Even Jaws wouldn't swallow that. Now, I'd like to thank John O'Dowd for your contribution. Well done, John. Thanks for coming in all the way. James McCarthy, as always, insightful and... Uh, a great knowledge. Obviously, he has eight county championship medals, but no county intermediate medals. Still can't find one <laughs> anywhere. And Aidan, our young man uh, on the panel, who was able to open the door here and get us in tonight. Um, uh, we'd like to thank Aidan as well for his contribution. Obviously, he's deeply immersed in Abbey Dorney, and we wish all the teams the weekend, Abbey Dorney, Ballyhaig, Ballyduff and Kilmiley, all the best, and may the best two teams reach the final. So this is Mort Murphy signing off from this preview show and review and also thank the man behind the camera, the man that makes all this happen, the genius that is John C. O'Shea.